I'm done, I'll display the map and I'll stay up there so we can move around. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start. Thank you for your patience. And uh, Selectman DeWitt is uh, going to do the approval of the meeting minutes. My question is, are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? And I apologize, we didn't have uh, prints for you here before us. I hope you've got them electronically. I have mine and can actually do it as we sit if uh, you want to make some additions or corrections. And if there aren't any, somebody can move to approve. So moved. <laughs> All we right. have a second right in next to me. In that case, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Good. We have approved the minutes. Moving forward, Ms. Stone and Ms. Crossley, you want to talk to us about our progress? Lisa, you want to handle that? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I want to thank uh, every member of the committee that has um, gotten me a, a first draft of the section that you were working on. Um, we, are, uh, we are slowly but surely putting it together, um, and uh, I am waiting. I actually just recently got um, the section from uh, Mr. Kleckner, and, um, and I also just recently for some reasons did not have um, the piece that uh, Mr. Goldstein had done, so um, those are going along. Um, much of what remains to be done in the report is dependent on uh, our subsequent conversations um, tonight and otherwise, and so um, for the moment we don't actually have anything to uh, discuss here, um, but uh, if there are particular sections that need more work, I can always get back to the drafters about that, um, and we will try to fill in the empty spots after tonight with um, more of the information that we have. Thank you. So let me just uh, say, I forgot to say at the beginning, uh, number one, that it looks like we will have our next meeting on Monday the 12th of August. Uh, that's number one, and... Uh, Is that actually... I don't uh, know that we are or not. <laughs> well, uh, it looks that way to me at the present time, that, okay. subject to further change. Um, and uh, um, I also wanted to tell the... Uh, public that we will, as we did last time, have a, a brief break uh, for our delicious pizza uh, that will be served again. We apologize for holding you up, but uh, uh, I hope you understand that we need to uh, feed our committee. Thank you. So um, uh, with no more ado, we wanted to uh, update you on uh, some of the subcommittees work that's looked at redistricting. Okay. Um, w w one of the things that's been going on that I know many of you will participate in is the, the Facebook group that uh, is very active and I find actually very interesting to read. And there was a thread that uh, got me thinking, questioning uh, some of the uh, uh, change uh, redistricting change numbers and the percentages and how they were computed. And I, I work with data professionally kind of all day. And, and one of the things I've always learned and I preach and I teach is that when you're working with data, um, you have to look at the, the answers you're getting, uh, make approximations and, and ask yourself, does the data make uh, sense? And um, the thread on Facebook got me thinking, got me looking at the chart again, and, uh, and, 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 and I came to the conclusion that there was some funny stuff going on in the data, and it didn't make sense, and, and then I made some further inquiries. And it turns out, uh, well, I'll, I'll give an example of one of the things uh, I saw when I, when I started looking at the data in depth, is uh, in, 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 say, the Baldwin uh, study, it showed, uh, uh, people changing from 
uh, the, the Lawrence School to the Baker School. And they're on opposite ends of town. And uh, how, how could that happen? It really can't happen, because the, the Baker District did not uh, overtake the Lawrence District. It's just physically impossible. And what it turns out, in, in looking at the source data, is that um, what, what I was using was not the district that the student lives in, but I was using the district the student attends. So what, as, as many of you know that, you know, Brookline, we, we, we like to think we have a neighborhood school model, and for the most part we do. There are a number of district-wide programs, and then there are other reasons why uh, students may go to a school out of district. They may have lived in a different district and then moved out of the district, and they petitioned the, the, the superintendent and the principal to stay in their home, the school that they're that, they, that they've been attending. So there are, there are actually a fair number of uh, students, about 20% of the, uh, uh, the students attend out of uh, district uh, schools. And it's quite, it, 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 the, the numbers are uh, big enough to, to make a difference uh, in the analysis. And so I redid the studies. So th this is the, the, the Baldwin study, and the red line is the original change numbers, and the blue line is the revised change numbers. So for example, you know, Heath is still you know, over 60%. It's still roughly two-thirds of the, uh, the Heath population uh, changes. Lawrence is a bit, very big difference. Uh, it goes down from 40% of the population to 20%. Lincoln goes down from 21 to 9. Pierce, 34 to 20. Runkle still, um, is still very high. The map hasn't changed, um, and the story of the map hasn't changed. Uh, what you see here is a very large disparity. Uh, between the effects on the different schools, but the absolute numbers have changed. The, the curve looks very much the same as it did before. So, um, so that's the effect of the change on the Baldwin study. I did this for the other two studies. Let's go down. Chart two is the old Lincoln study. So here, the big uh, you know, Lincoln is exactly the same within a couple of, uh, within a percentage point. Pierce is uh, a, a big effect. And if you think of the way the districts were drawn, that, that kind of makes intuitive sense. Driscoll, very a big difference. Devotion, a difference. And Baker, a little difference. Lawrence, uh, there's a, a big difference. But here too, uh, the, 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 the graph, the, again, the map hasn't changed, just the absolute numbers have. The, the shape of the curve is a little different, but I would, the, the story I would write about the map is exactly the same as before and, and, and now from a town-wide perspective. And this is the Northeast study. Now, the Northeast study bef before was a flatter curve. It didn't, the, the, it, it, it affects each of the schools a bit more, uh, and, and, and the effect is more even. And what, what, what this was saying, if we were able to site a school somewhere in the Northeast, and we do not have a site, um, we would be able to spread the effect uh, of the redistricting pretty evenly, relatively evenly uh, throughout the town. Um, so uh, that's the, 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 the again, the, the, the red is the old and the blue one is, is the new. Whoops. And putting the three of them together, this is the revised. You can see 
the difference. We have the big swings with the Baldwin study. We have swings with the Lincoln study that aren't quite as big, but they're still swings. And then we have a relatively level uh, uh, change with, with, with the uh, Northeast study for which we don't have a site. So that's the, the story of the, of the, uh, 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 the change numbers. Uh, we can post uh, the spreadsheet in the same way that we did uh, the original. So you can all have at it. And hopefully this time I did it right. And I'm pretty confident I did. So uh, that's the story. Um, I have a um, thank you. Uh, it, 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 the, that's particularly interesting. That uh, it appears that the effects of any of those is relatively, there, there's not much difference in effect. It's just the distribution of the effect that's. Uh, uh, right, and the numbers, the percentages are lower. They, right. they were overstated. Right. Before. I appreciate that the, the entire curve has dropped down so that. Uh, right. Um, but the shapes of the curve are very similar. Right. Um, have you had a chance to do any work on the, um, uh, the concept of um, adding to three schools in addition to devotion? Or that's, that, that's the that's next step. Okay. It'd be very, because I'm very curious as to whether the net effect of that isn't, is different than the net effect of, uh, yes. of this. So I, I guess that's a good segue. Was that arranged in advance? <laughs> no. Conspiracy. You may want, I don't have a mouse here, so you may want me to drive. So yeah, okay. if you need to. So um, the subcommittee met, our subcommittee, the three of us uh, are the subcommittee. We met last Thursday night. Unfortunately, Neil couldn't, couldn't join us. And uh, we began with a dis discussion of analyzing the HMFH plan uh, and how that would affect redistricting. So we looked at, uh, just want to explain what the HMFH yeah, that's what I'm going to do. The HMFH plan basically involves, uh, if you remember, adding seven classrooms at Heath, eight classrooms at Lawrence, and nine class classrooms at, Dr at Driscoll. And you gotta understand one thing before we get into this too deeply, is that th this analysis is a little bit different from the analysis that we did when we were talking about adding a new K-8. The difference is that each of the districts also is experiencing some, some within district growth over the period of time that we're worried about. So what we're really talking about when we're adding classrooms is the surplus over what the district's own growth can ha uh, accounts for. So uh, adjusting for those figures, uh, we got to, a, uh, it, it was a, approximately 175 um, surplus students that would be added in Heath, 75 students in the Lawrence district, and uh, 150 added in the Driscoll district for 400, and 400 students and then add that to what was being accommodated within the, the district, you get to 600. So uh, Rebecca and I worked through those, that redistricting equation and um, somewhat, we, we, we weren't expecting to end up in this place, but we, we did naturally end up in, in kind of some, a, a disappointing bit of news. And that bit, bit of disappointing news is that adding such a large amount to Heath essentially puts us in the same problem that we have when we did, for instance, the Baldwin redistricting plan. It, it creates irrational and unexpected uh, redistricting decisions that have to be made and, and decisions that, that we quickly saw were, were <coughs> not likely to be feasible, so we never actually finished that bit of work. Once we got to that same point, it looked a lot like the, like the Baldwin plans that we had done earlier. So at that point, we, uh, we analyzed something that uh, I think we made reference to at the end of last Monday night's meeting, 
and that is a, a, a slightly different plan, one that would uh, put less emphasis on Heath. So we, were, we, we now talked about adding four classrooms to Heath um, that kept that, that, that Lawrence uh, eight and that and kept the, the Driscoll uh, nine as well but also did what, what we, something else that we talked about last Monday night, which is to add more to devotion than is currently on the table. Three more classrooms at devotion. Uh, that would give us, what, a, 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 a five section throughout the school classroom, class. And uh, that was encouraging. We, we, we would therefore accommodate in the same growth um, as, as with the, the earlier plan. And when we got to work on the, what the redistricting would look like, and that's what you see on the screen here, uh, there's really some, some cause for, for you know, optimism based on this plan. Why don't you go into that, Rebecca? So essentially what you're looking at is um, with, a, with the expansion at the schools that are in the heart of uh, the growth district, so we have Devo, um, Lawrence, and Driscoll, um, taking substantial increases, um, especially allowing for the increase uh, at Driscoll and a little bit more at Devo to pull off of the what became unacceptable um, redistricting from Heath. What you end up doing, um, the exercise that we did, and again, just an exercise, we're not proposing this in any shape, <laughs> but, um, but the exercise showed that by essentially using what are already a lot of buffered areas between these schools um, and shifting those lines permanently, um, we would be able to use the, that growth that we just described to draw um, enough kids uh, um, out of Pierce so that Pierce could then pick up some um, kids off of the Lincoln um, enrollment. Um, Driscoll then, Driscoll is very, is instrumental in drawing away from the Pierce um, and, uh, and then it also, um, the, the sticking point remains um, for this, uh, the, um, the supersizing, but that's not the issue. The issue is simply whether or not, what we were looking at was whether or not you could do this with relatively minimal disruption to existing school districts. And the answer to that is pretty clearly yes. Um, that by redistricting based, I mean it's not just the buffer zones, it's a little bit more than that, but you would see a much less substantial disruption of what's currently being um, experienced. Again, bear in mind that we are using um, current enrollments as a proxy for future enrollments. So in fact, we were moving students around for this exercise who will not be the students who are enrolled in the future when it, was, when it would be put in place. So again, don't ever look at these maps and say, oh, okay, my kids, my kids would move, my kids wouldn't move. We don't know where the kids are gonna be. We don't know exactly whether or not these lines would move. A redistricting plan would have to be based on much firmer numbers um, and much better information. So don't take anything from these that suggests that any given block would or would not do something. It was just an exercise to see whether it was feasible within our charge to minimize redistricting impact on families and the answer to that was yes as long as we're not using the Heath School. I'll just add to that, you know, I, I like this plan too because you have these sort of nice crescent shapes if, if you will and, and that's that's showing me that we're, we're really minimizing the impact of redistricting here. The one exception to that though is in the south and this is this pink area that you see. So remember that the plan included, uh, still included so, some um, modular expansion at Heath, a likely modular, and that's what you're seeing there. You're seeing the Heath district expanding into what's currently Baker district and providing a little bit of relief to the, to the Baker district too. Now it's pointed out, since both Heath and Baker both could accommodate modular, there's a possibility that that, that you know that, that same four modular classrooms that you'd be adding to Heath could be added to Baker as well. There's reason based on, you know, other factors why, you, why, why Heath might be the logical choice to do this expansion initially though. Michael. So I have um, a couple of things. Um, one is, uh, it may be too soon to say what the 
sort of average, what the, uh, what, what the, um, we know more or less from, or well, we know from Neil's work, uh, the total percentage of students in the whole system that were likely to be shifted in the, in the very, in the three C. We, we, we haven't that got that far. yet. I, I knew, I knew that was coming from okay. your interest in, on, right. in the last discussion, but we, the, we're, not, we're not that right. far with it. The second point is, um, in thinking about what Neil said that the data, he, w he was using data as to where students actually were as opposed to where they lived because they may be going to school out of district. Um, uh, it's not, um, it, it, it makes the, the, the issue more complex um, in that um, if you redistrict and a student who is um, going to school in one place needs to move to another, regardless of where they live, you've redistricted that, that student. So you may be taking, um, it, it may be correct to use the data from where students are going to school as opposed to where they live. And that's my data wonk question for you. Um, well, you know, if, let's say a, a child lives in the Baker District and they're going to Lawrence and there are five, yep. for example. So we, ex we, 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 we change the Lawrence District uh, a little bit one way or the other, or maybe even a lot one way or the other. There's no way we're going to be encompassing those five kids. So how do you, how do you account for those five kids? Exactly. So, you know, what we were really doing is using the current kids as, as a proxy. Yeah. Um, and there's no, you know, we, we can't be as precise as perhaps we were for those of you who may have been involved in, say, the uh, re-precincting uh, exercise where we had census statistics. We knew how many people the census said lived in this street, yep. and that was our number. That was, we were working with precision. Here, here you don't have that. Yeah, okay. Well, I think that's an important thing to remember for us and for the folks sitting here, that um, it's not a, uh, an exact science. What you're doing there is not exact science, and even in the course of actually redistricting, there's flexibility there, buffer zones and so forth, um, that, um, uh, they, that uh, come into effect here. Right. Um, so so these, are, these are basic, Rebecca mentioned that yeah. these colored blocks you see essentially are the existing buffer zones just being expanded. But right. obviously, new buffer zones would have to be set beyond those. Yeah. Okay. Um, how much, uh, or is it premature even to think about getting a percentage out of this? And this is a this is very the map is very instructive, but numbers would be even more powerful. Yeah, we're probably a day or two away from that. Okay. Yeah, I think I, Jed was on the verge of being able to get them out to us. He just ran out of time right. by the end of today. Okay. All right. So, Michael, can I just uh, uh, make sure I understand your question? Um, I'm not sure I understand it, so go ahead. Well, there you go. <laughs> then that makes me feel better. Yeah. So, if, if we were talking, let's talk about uh, an individual uh, who was actually attending Lawrence instead of, I forget what school. Baker. Uh, is the Instead example. of Baker, right. it uh, it either is because they moved uh, from Lawrence area to the Baker area, right. or it might be because uh, and and they requested to stay at Lawrence, or it might be because there was this program yeah. at Lawrence. And I'm assuming that uh, uh, the conclusion or the responses were that, for example, it might not be the same child who, who would end up being redistricted, for example, if the exactly. child was there for a special program, you wouldn't, you, you would use your common right. sense the and you would, stays there. Yeah, yeah, the program stays there. So, so is, that's the kind of thing that you were talking about? Well, there, yeah, is that, and also, um, well, yes, basically, that's it, and also it takes into account the fact that if somebody's in a buffer zone or somebody lives, they live in Driscoll and for some reason their child is in Runkle, um, the, the, the data that you should be using is the fact that there's a child in Runkle because if you, if you add to, um, uh, to Driscoll, you're, you may be pulling that child back from Runkle uh, into Driscoll even though they already live there. Right. You're still pulling them back in. Right. Well, so uh, I have a follow-up. Oh, you. Well, the one thing I wanted to say is we have it both ways now and if you choose to use the first uh, go-round, you can. <laughs> 
Um, I think what it amounts to is um, the overall number is an interesting number in both both way, looking at it both ways. I'd be very curious and very, very curious to how, as to how this comes out. I'll, I'll hazard a guess that it will be pretty close ultimately to the overall number that um, uh, if we built a new K through eight, uh, that uh, uh, there'll be a similar amount of shifting because we're adding essentially the number of classrooms that uh, are, um, are in a K through eight, but we'll see. Um, I don't think, um, I'm trying to think about the impact on the decision that we, uh, that, that we make here, and uh, that's the critical uh, question, of course, and I haven't got my head around that one yet. All right, well, maybe so I can help you with that. I was also just going to suggest one thing, if, if I may, um, that this exercise is just about the question of redistricting impact. It is completely neutral on whether or not uh, the size of the schools being created um, is uh, a welcome change about whether or not, um, I, you know, whether or not the three plus the high school option is meets our equity standards. There, this is completely neutral. It is mm -hmm. just saying just numbers. if we if we yeah. used this and we look at the redistricting impact because that was one of our major criteria for um, for looking at uh, the feasibility of something like this. You know what's what are the optimal arrangements mm -hmm. and. Quite clearly, Heath is not an optimal arrangement under those circumstances. Moving the moving the adjustments to the area where the growth is strongest is, um, yep. and it's better off. So that's that's the takeaway here. Everything else is pretty much um, we're we're completely neutral on it. We have no recommendations in those regards. Rebecca, I just have one question. You said that you use the current cohort of students. When do we have a better handle on the students that will actually? As soon as they enroll in the public schools of Brookline, we don't know about them until they tell us that they are here and intending to attend. Can, but, can I throw out an idea? Um, we, it, it seems to me that there the perhaps is a way to make an expansion uh, at Heath um, uh, help with the overall solution. And that perhaps, we, ha we have a number of district-wide programs that might be scattered throughout the town. If we were to, say, move some or all of those programs to Heath, so Heath becomes a center for district-wide for district um, uh, programs, um, that would free up uh, space in some of the other schools and then you be able to utilize some expansion at Heath without impacting the, uh, the zones. So I, I throw that idea out as food for thought. Um, I'm certainly not able to speak for the school committee or for the superintendent, but um, the public schools of Brookline model of inclusion and the placement of um, those whatever we have that are, in fact, pull-out programs is based on a very sensitive calculation of many factors. Um, and uh, it's, I don't think it would be likely that, um, that our model of inclusion would accommodate putting all pull-out programs at one school. So whereas it might work on the numbers, it probably would not work for the, for the programs themselves. But again, that's just my early take on, on the suggestion. Is Mr. Rowe with us? Do you have any do. uh, additional information that you could provide? Um, even just an overall picture of where programs, how programs are distributed throughout the sites? Um, well, I don't believe that would throw additional light on this. Uh, we do have uh, either substantially separate, primarily substantially separate programs at a number of these schools. Um, so I, I think that that issue would be considered if redistricting were to happen um, and we'd you know, obviously look at these numbers and see what the impact is, but we haven't done um, an, an analysis of where students are coming from, generally speaking. Can, can you just sort of, uh, for general background, yeah. explain? I mean, I know they're English lang language learning classes. Just give some examples of what those programs might be. A, a townwide program is almost exclusively a special education program. Our English language, our, our students in English language programs are in fact served um, at their uh, resident school. 
um, so that they're all the, are substantially so they separate. So would, they wouldn't be going to, out of district. They'd be in their basic school. That's an important yeah. thing for everybody to understand. That's correct. Well, what we have, um, we'll have a focus. Uh, so we have English second language instruction at each school. We have focuses where one school may have primarily a Japanese program or one a, a Hebrew, et cetera, where um, parents may select a primary language or a focused language. However, parents are also allowed, encouraged, some would say, to um, stay in their resident school and be served through English as a second language. So, you know, so it'll vary in terms of what a parent may select. Uh, and then our substantially separate programs, depending on program model, are distributed across the system. So this would intersect with this, but uh, we don't have any data at this point that would, I think, really inform the decision making on the Okay, way. that's helpful. Yeah. Thank you. And I guess the only uh, the reason that I asked uh, the question that I did was to emphasize to the public that the actual decisions uh, regarding uh, who might be distributed is is a very individual decision and and, and not a uh, uh, just uh, well uh, a category has to go yeah. from here to there so that people understand that. But I, I do think um, the it's. Imp it's important to recognize we struggled with, there are a number of reasons why we struggled with Amory Baldwin and Old Lincoln School. Okay? But the, at the core, I think if there had been no redistricting at, at all involved, we would not have had the, re, the response that we've had from the public. The redistricting is very clearly um, uh, seen as a significant problem by a lot of parents. Um, the um, any plan that we have that doesn't add children, add seats evenly in the um, in the schools that need them um, re involves some redistricting, including what we've just looked at, which is the closest that we've come to a situation in which we can add classrooms in a number of schools and, and spread the uh, 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 the increase in classrooms. And um, we're going to have to do a great deal of educating of parents to recognize that some redistricting is inevitable unless we can persuade the parents of about 1,000 students to move out of town. <laughs> well, <laughs> and furthermore, an let's option. have no more people coming in who have children who will be entering kindergarten next year either. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's true. We, we could sort of designate home ownership. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't think we're going to go there. Nope. Okay, so thank you, subcommittee. Is there anything else that members would like to, I mean, would you like to add to what has I'll, been I'll discussed? I'll add one, one point since money hasn't, hasn't really come into this yet. But, uh, but it shall. Just, it, you know, if I was to guess about the economic efficiency of this plan, the fact that we're all, that devotion is already on the table and we're talking about just sort of a delta increase there probably adds some, some economic efficiency. Uh, the, the, the vision for Driscoll is obviously a, a, a big one, and that, that's, a, that's a big number, but that's, in, that's the same in either of these iterations. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Lawrence and, and Heath slash Baker editions are, are most likely done in, a, in modular and form and, and most likely with, with some efficiency there, so we should... This is probably not, you know, a pie in the sky economically is my, my very rough guess. I wish George were here to, 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 well, to let, let's, let's counteract my assumptions. Yeah. Well, we, let, let me just say that one. George was, uh, did expect to be here tonight and his, uh, his uh, plane uh, uh, schedule was forced upon him in a different way and that's why he's not here. So he, he's going to call me tomorrow, actually. Yes, Ms. Stone. If I may, might. My sense is that um, that if we are doing as substantial an increase at uh, at Lawrence and Driscoll as this as the three plus high school calls for, assuming that the high school plan also involves a very substantial cost for renovation and expansion, no matter how it's handled, um, that this option, the three plus high school option, is uh, is a huge financial impact. Um, before we even begin discussing um, the uh, 
the impact and the difficulty of the logistics of handling um, that's those size projects um, in a very short amount of time with um, swing space that is not able to accommodate the size schools that we already have. So um, I'm just saying that um, that although it works on a number of different levels, particularly the impact on the existing families and retaining our neighborhood schools, which I know are very important in terms of our criteria, um, this is a this is a dollar amount at the bottom of, of this proposal from HMFH that, um, that I find quite um, challenging. Well, how about, go ahead. And I'd like to add that I, I wonder what the ultimate impact on all those schools are. What are we turning those schools into? We will have next to no um, slack or flexibility. Um, the quality of those schools, they will, even though we're adding to common spaces and so forth, I don't know this because we haven't studied it, nor has HMA, HMFH, but my concern is that the school, those three schools, four schools, will turn into schools that we don't really like so much, that they are just maxed out or beyond maxed out. Maybe not technically, but maxed out. So it seems to me that we're naturally segueing into the beginning of a discussion uh, about the various options that we have and the implications uh, of them armed with this new information. I believe so. So? What I've, what I've heard, just to, uh, not to add anything to it, but what I've heard from Selectman Goldstein is that, that um, at least he thinks that it, uh, it makes sense to think about uh, uh, devotion in terms of a slightly larger uh, plan if we're going to go to the uh, deal with the schools that we already have that it makes sense to go with uh, devotion as a somewhat larger school and um, I think it's fair to say uh, uh, co-chairman DeWitt that uh, that was something which uh, many uh, of you fed back to uh, um, Chairman DeWitt uh, that might make some sense. Right. So if, if, if that's an option before us, what does that do to the pedagogical, is that the word, model? So what, what is, the, what is the, uh, the, the number I'm, I've heard thrown around, a five-section devotion school? What does that look like, and is that something we want? Nine hundred students at devotion. Right, and also, I mean, nine hundred students at devotion, but we're also talking about eight hundred and fifty students at um, Lawrence, and potentially almost that many at Driscoll, with the expansion that we're t that if if we take Heath largely off the table. Um, so it's not just a supersized Devo. We've we've essentially supersized three of our schools and doesn't really, you know, there there may be a slight difference if we were if we were dreaming um, and uh, and you know while we're throwing around thirty or forty million dollars we might as well dream about um, not supersizing Lawrence which would go up by two hundred and fifty and supersize Pierce which is already at seven hundred and fifty and could go up to eight hundred and fifty um, more easily but um, but the same, I, I think it's a great question. I think the question is whether or not um, the neighborhoods that uh, serve those schools um, can, can take that size school. I think it's a great question for the school community itself about what happens. Um, I think, you know, a lot of our schools that have grown, I mean, all of our schools have grown. We don't have any small schools anymore, really. Um, we used to have schools at 350, 400 kids. That's the, those, those days are past. Um, so, but I think talking to the parents, certainly listening to the, to the concern at Devo over the size of the school as it started ratcheting up, even with its, its own enrollment, it's not a question of, of our deciding to supersize it, it's, it's being supersized by the enrollment pressures. Um, but that's a, it, it is, it's a huge concern um, and consideration about what um, the district looks like and feels like with some extraordinarily large schools. But the bottom line, just to be sort of come around full circle, is we still have to find a way to provide classrooms for those kids. That's what is before us. 
So I have a couple quick comments. Uh, the first is one of the takeaways that I received from last last Monday night's meeting was something that Pip said, and I thought it, it was important, and that is. We're, in a way, we're very fortunate because the area in town where there's the greatest density also happens to be the largest school site that we have, and that's that's devotion. Right. So that that's, that that actually helps this 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 a little bit. I, I also want to say that if we're gonna, I mean, it, it's a well-known fact that we have more density in the north part of Brookline than we do in 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 the rest of Brookline, and if that's the reality, and if that's the and if we're going to stick with our neighborhood school model, which I, I haven't heard anything to the contrary yet, then yes, our North Brookline schools are going to have to be bigger. It's, it's, it's simple mathematics. The last thing I want to say is that if there is a pedagogical reason why big schools don't work, I'm, I, I profess absolutely no knowledge on the subject. I, I would really like to hear it from, from our administration or from our school committee or people who, who who know more about about these matters than I do, but so far I haven't. Okay. Other thoughts on just this redistricting discussion? Can I just? I'm I'm sorry. I I just want to borrow um, shamelessly from our um, early childhood principal Vicki Milstein, um, who puts a, a very different. Um, shines a different light on the issue of overcrowding or moving kids around or things like that when she talks to the beat parents in particular um, because as you know our early childhood program has been moved around a lot in the last many years in trying to do this and what Vicki has said and I want to stand up and cheer every time she does is that the thing you can count on in Brookline regardless of where that classroom is is that your child will be walking into a wonderful classroom with a wonderful teacher robustly supported by um, a devoted school system and a devoted community and the quality of that education does not change one place to the next and I think we have to bear that in mind even if we're talking about larger schools that that will still be true this will still be the Brookline schools um, and uh, and people can go on counting on that providing we can continue to hire and train excellent uh, excellent teachers which is uh, central uh, the research shows is the central issue regarding successful schools, and uh, not, I'm I'm not uh, uh, qualified to respond, uh, Selectman Goldstein, to your question. But I will say that um, my understanding is that from uh, an administration point of view, one would have to expand uh, the administration to some extent in each school, in order to supervise properly, and in order to fairly um, uh, see how, how people are doing. And so there, there is an implication there. Um, if, you, if you're able to supervise, evaluate, and train uh, an additional number of teachers whom you've hired who have the potential to be excellent, uh, my guess, I say guess because I'm not uh, the world's leading expert by any chance, that you would be able to sustain the quality of the education, Mr. Salmon. Yeah, but uh, if we if we um, added a <coughs> uh, a, a ninth K through eight in the non-existent site uh, that we don't have, <laughs> you would have the same thing. You have to I, have a principal. You have to have uh, all of the staff that's there. Um, that's it's just a question of where those people sit. I uh, agree. I absolutely agree with you. I wasn't trying to denigrate in any way. I, I, I was just, oh, okay. uh, uh, I was just trying to indicate how I thought it could be accomplished. Right. <clears throat> so, other, other comments or suggestions uh, in light of uh, this new information that people would like to bring forward uh, regarding what they uh, are thinking. Could talk about what more data we need to, to you know, to, to fully flesh out this, this this idea. And what one Rebecca referred to when we were standing at the podium, which is uh, the, um, the the equity impacts of this plan. The second was also referred to, which is the you know that that curvy graph we were looking for, looking at needs to be done for the for, for this idea as well. Mm -hmm. But what I'm asking the committee though, what what else do we do we need to know? 
Well, something that we can't know. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> things no, we can't know. can't um, is where the school population is going. And so one of my concerns is um, where the school population is going. I um, doubt that even a wall between here and JP would help. Um, some someone that I actually know from a previous life just moved in here to Brookline, two houses, three houses away from me with three kids from JP because they wanted to go to Brookline schools. Anecdotal, but pretty common. And so my concern is, um, are we maxing out our schools? Are we maxing them out in a way that I totally agree that, I mean, I think we all know that uh, you could put uh, kids in a, in a tent with a great teacher and they can have a fantastic education. There's no question in my mind about that. But we don't, in fact, put our kids in tents. We're trying to do better than that, more than that. Um, you could raise equity issues of whether these schools are maxed out and other schools are not. I won't even get into that specifically. But the question is, are we, would we be making our schools something we do not really want, though of course they will work? And what happens if the population continues to go up and we have no place left to go. So to me, one very strong option is saying like, well, should we consider the K-7 model or the K-6 model? And therefore we can uh, create some space. We could bring some beeps back if we can, if we want to. The beeps may be unfortunately a pawn that gets shifted in and out as the population goes up or down. Well, they've been doing that now. I'm not saying that that's okay. But um, right now we're renting space. I have no idea what the cost of that is. But changing the high school model, which means building another high school, because we also have to address the high school, um, may allow us better facilities and far more flexibility for the future. I'm not totally set on that, but I feel that that needs a really strong hearing. So you might not know this, but I also identified that as uh, another uh, concept which, which would uh, uh, deal with uh, a number of our problems. And what, what occurred to me was that it leaves, if, if that, uh, once again, I'm not promoting this, but I'm just talking about having thought about it a little bit, uh, that what it would do would be, it would leave some of the options that we were talking about uh, a little while ago open in the event that our growth continued aggressively. Exactly. And I think it's going to, but that's just where I think that's a segue for my little MSBA lecture. Great. All right? <laughs> Good. And um, then I think after the lecture, um, because I saw the food come in, that we ought to take a, a short break to see if we can wolf down our food. Okay. Um, we, uh, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm reporting um, from uh, various different, several different sources, but in particular I'm referring to a letter that we got from the Massachusetts School Building Authority on July 17th, which basically said um, we are asking, uh, we the town is asking the state to fund the devotion school. Um, but on the other hand, we have not yet clarified for uh, ourselves or anybody else, actually, uh, what our long-term uh, plan, overall plan for accommodating enrollment is. And they gave us uh, a pretty clear uh, direction that they would like to have um, the B-Space Committee not reach a final conclusion without at least providing some kind of uh, indication of the direction the committee's going in to the MSBA. Uh, because basically they are saying that we cannot go forward with our contract for the devotion school until we've given some kind of direction. And so in order to accomplish that, our goal for this evening is to have the committee look at some of our options that we've discussed, and I've counted them up, and I think in the largest list there's 30 plus or minus. Um, but we're going to try to do some filtering in order for us to be in a position to give feedback to the state as to the direction um, we think we're going in. We're not going to make final decisions, but to put the, the project at Devotion School at risk right now is something we're not prepared to do. 
So in order to accomplish that, we may have to slow down some, which is why I said earlier I wasn't sure we're going to meet next Monday. Um, we probably do have things to discuss, um, but we will not, I think, certainly tonight, we will not be in a position to make a final uh, set of uh, recommendations. With luck, maybe we will be ready to do that uh, in a week. But I do believe we have a responsibility to respond to the MSBA who have made it pretty clear that the devotion school is un, they're not going to authorize going ahead with the devotion school until we have provided some indication of the direction uh, the town is going in. So having said that, uh, we're going to go through, I hope, a thoughtful review of um, options that we've been considering and try at least to narrow our focus without coming to final recommendations. And okay. can I just uh, kind of make an additional comment, which is in the form of a question back to Selectman DeWitt. Might that not be advantageous to us? That is to say, if we come to the state uh, with several different uh, options and ask them uh, whether there is a preference, uh, uh, in connect particularly in connection with the devotion project, um, might that not be advantageous to us? I would hope so. I, all I can say is that they've asked us to give them uh, some um, summary of uh, the conversations we've had. And since they've been pretty clear that they would like to hear that, uh, I think we are wiser um, offering them some feedback. So, yes, I would, I would really um, want to be careful about having the devotion project uh, put at risk, just because we neglected to give them an update on the process that we're going through. So that's why I thought we might have to take a break, but we'll see. Very good. Yes. So I just want to say that, that having been going over the different parts of the report that have been drafted, it's pretty clear to me that we have held up a number of the, the list of 30 um, to, a, to a set of, of standards. Um, I don't think it would be all that difficult to uh, determine some of them that's, that are, not, are no longer part of our conversation, either de facto or not, but we could certainly move, um, move those off and, and at least narrow down the things that we still want to talk about in more detail. I, I totally agree, and um, you know, one of the things we may want to do after our break is just sort of quickly um, go through the list um, exhaustively. I, I would say list, you know, just put them all, speak their names out loud. Um, and then I think we should focus on the ones that we think have a very low probability of feasibility and try to get those cleared. Uh, do some filtering and then see where we go from there. Um, and I'm pretty sure we ought to be able to do that. I, I'm very confident in the uh, uh, thoughtful approach that members of the committee will take. And I guess probably we ought to, uh, as we do that, at least touch base on the criteria that we had discussed um, earlier on as we, before we go forward. But anyway. Great. All right. Okay. With the indulgence of the public, if you'll permit us to feed our committee, quickly. who's been working very hard. We'll do that as quickly as we can. Thank you.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to come back together now. If we could ask everybody to sit down, please. Thank you very much. Chairman DeWitt, you wanted to uh, start this off? Yeah, I, just to begin, I, I'm just going to go through what I'm going to call a laundry list. It's of, with, in no particular order, um, but it just is a way of indicating the variety and number of consider, options we've considered, and I believe there are some things that aren't even on this list. Um, Okay, we've talked about expanding K through 8 at current sites, and that would include all of our current K through 8 schools except for Runkle, and although initially we excluded devotion because it was already programmed to go forward, I think we may have uh, opportunity to reconsider that. We talked about a new K through 8 school possibly built at the Baldwin School site or a concept school drawing from the whole town at the Baldwin School site. We talked about a possible new K through 8 at the site of the old Lincoln School. We talked about new K through 8s at Amory uh, Park and uh, at the Lynch Center and Playground. We've talked about a new possible high school at the Baldwin site and at Lars Anderson Park. We've talked about expanding the high school at the campus and also expanding it to include the old Lincoln School site for some specialized programs. We've also um, looked uh, or t talked about um, a new 8-9 school for 1,200 students, a single 8th grade school, a single 6th grade school, a combined K-8 through campus that would include Pierce, Lincoln, and old Lincoln School, We've talked about early education centers that might be at the Baldwin um, site uh, and might be um, at a site in partnership with Wheelock College or in partnership with Pine Manor College. And we have looked at property owned by Boston University on Dummer Street and Worthington Road. We've looked at uh, a site occupied by the Massachusetts Association for the Blind. We looked at Parsons Field owned by Northeastern University. And we briefly looked at a piece of commercial property on Cypress Street. So that's the laundry list. I think we uh, should be able to exclude. Do we, uh, did I leave anything out? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I looked at one. This wasn't discussed okay. publicly. But as a result of the BU meeting, they suggested a site that's in Brooklyn. Oh, a commercial site commercial on Commonwealth site, Avenue. You're yeah, right. on Commonwealth Avenue, uh, <coughs> right. site of okay. Enterprise Sorry rent a car that. through, uh, through um, Sullivan Tire, which right. is unfortunately not available. But. OK, all right. That's just to sort of say that's the list. Now I think our job is to try to focus, and I would hope focus at least, um, and I'm going to remind everybody about this. Um, we said that there were some criteria that must be satisfied in order for us to make any kind of favorable recommendation. And the four primary ones were educational excellence, site availability, having space available by the deadline, and in having uh, community support. And I think those qualities need to be uh, considered as we move our discussion forward. So having said that, Ellen, you want to add anything? No, I think you okay. covered a multitude of things. Um, I, I, I will maybe also um, put a little detail behind those uh, criteria. When we talked about um, meeting the deadline, we need space for 600 kids in K through 8 by 2017 and 600 at the high school by 2022. Um, site availability, uh, we have included environmental, legislative, ownership, and legal risks within that uh, category. Um, and community support uh, must include the broad community, including, in the end, probably uh, a vote of town meeting and an override vote that will be townwide. I think that's all. Okay. okay. <coughs> yes, it is. Yep. Just to clarify that all those those were the uh, must-haves, I think, yep. as we characterized them um, with Cynthia, but 
that is not the end of our list of criteria against which we have measured. Not at all. Um, and options, in fact, so. uh, uh, having our financial partnership with the Massachusetts School Building Authority is also one of our main concerns. As is equity and diversity. And equity and diversity. And um, yes, you want to go through the others. And of course, the final one, the risk of not solving the That's problem. That's right. We do not want to not solve the problem. Right. Okay. So, um, so we have, uh, several of us thought about this um, to some extent and subject to the committee's uh, responses and comments, uh, maybe uh, should we at least, uh, shall I bring forth a motion uh, and see uh, whether people agree with it or not? Sure, and it may be that in the discussion around the motion, we'll get comments. Absolutely. So uh, in light of uh, what Chairman DeWitt uh, just, um, just uh, went through her list, um, one motion that we thought uh, the committee might be willing to uh, consider and comment upon is as follows that the B-Space Committee removes from consideration the following sites, Amory Park, MAB, Worthington. Well, that's the BU property. Yeah, the Worthington, Lynch, all due to the private sites being unavailable for purchase or swap and the public sites being unbuildable according to HMFH and Town Council. Well, I'm glad to read that again, if, if uh, no problem. Uh, so, move that the B Space Committee removes from consideration the following sites Amory Park, uh, MAB, Worthington, and Lynch, all due to the private sites being unavailable for purchase or swap and the public sites being unbuildable according to HMFH and town council. Please. Um, this doesn't fit into the wording, but I would Well, add you can certainly amend the motion. We, right have, we, have, other, yeah. we have other motions coming no, up. I see yeah. the other potential motions, okay. but I would also like to take off the table Lars Anderson. Um, I'd support that. Okay, and well, uh, ha hang on. I'm, I'm going to try to um, keep track as we go along, but that's okay. Have discussion, please. And uh, Dummer Street should be in here, too, uh, next to Worthington. I, yeah, probably it was meant to be encompassed with, I, we might want to say BU Park. So my most substantive comment is to add Lars Anderson to this list. And the way to do it would be public sites being unbuildable or the committee does not wish to consider. I don't know. All right. So um, I think that deserves a more robust discussion. That's well, fine. That's and I threw it out there. Yeah. Go, go I, at right. it. Well, well, I appreciate the, the sentiment behind um, the motion. The um, HMFH just put it. Uh, very squarely on our table, and there are no um, obvious constraints, according to our list anyway, of um, criteria um, to remove it at this point. I'm not saying that, that that amounts to an advocacy for it for anything, but to remove it, it seems to me, is not, is not subjecting it to the same um, criteria that we subjected the others to. Um, I think the, um, the effect of doing that is to say, no, we're not going to build a second high school. And I think that all by itself. Oh, I disagree. No? Uh, I can see uh, uh, doing that at the Baldwin site. Okay. Perhaps doing it at the golf course. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll withdraw the comment. Okay. Because I think that, that as a practical matter, the. Uh, it's removing one particular site. Right. That I don't think should be in the mix. All right, and just okay. uh, a technical point here. Is there any objection to adding Dummer Street? It's just lumping the two Boston University properties nope. and naming them both. Okay? No problem right. on Dummer Street. Uh, with respect to Mr. Wyshynski's comment, I agree with you on the high school, but I mean, uh, on Los Anderson, but um, I 
feel equally strong about um, about the golf course. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting <laughs> I'm not suggesting strong. the golf course as a site. I'm just throwing that out and as just uh, about as equally about Baldwin School. It's, you know, I, I would certainly well, build get, something let's, on the let's, part let's of the let's get to it. The part yeah, of the uh, on the part of the Baldwin School that's already a school and a little bit more of that, and it's already school land. You know. Uh, Restricted for schools, that's fine. But you know, if we're talking about the, the plan that I saw that involves basically taking the entire school playground, that, that I'm, I would take that off the table too. Th those are pristine parklands, you know. And, and, and that's fair. as you know, I was I was not willing to take the Lynch Center off the table, but I am tonight. I mean, as a result of H HMFH's comments last week, that that was kind of the nail in the coffin for the Lynch Center for me. That I would not describe as pristine parkland. Maybe it could be par pristine parkland someday, and given that it's coming off the table, maybe we, in a future meeting that doesn't involve school decisions, maybe we can we can talk about restoring it to something. But Lars Anderson and golf course and and most of the the the, the school center site, I, you know, I, I just I just cannot see any more than I could see building on Amory. I cannot see building a on those sites. So, so you would remove a second high school from con consideration? Well, you could build a second high school at uh, at Old Lincoln. So in theory, you could. Uh, in well, theory, we could do a lot of things. In theory, but you could build a small second high school. You could build a, a second high school in Baldwin if you confined it to the the area of the site that's that's uh, properly restricted for 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 school use. Um, and who knows? You so. Know. Uh, I, my I, suggestion I you, you could demolish Pierce and build a second high school there. Th in theory, right. I, mean, this, there, I don't want to say, say eliminate a second high school, although I'm not particularly in favor of the idea. But I am strongly opposed to a second high school at those locations. All right. So I need to be clear. You're suggesting that we not consider either golf course or Baldwin for, so I mean, this, the, the Sewell Recreation Center. But, but we Sewell Recreation and the golf course not be We considered. haven't discussed the golf course at all. Well, yeah, right. If, if we are going to make motions based on criteria that were well established and vetted by the entire committee, and we have in fact subjected a number of the sites to those, to that test, I feel very comfortable taking things off the table that have been subjected to that test, but not taking things off that table that have not been subjected to the test or, frankly, passed the test. Um, and that includes, no matter how much you like it um, and want to protect it, that includes Lars Anderson, because if you take Lars Anderson and Putterham and others off, you also have to take off the area of land outside the Lawrence School that HMFH suggested expanding the Lawrence School onto, which is also pristine and well-used parkland. So if we have a zero open space net lost um, policy going forward and we just want to constrain our options, we can do that, but, um, but I didn't think that was the charge of the committee and I would never support it and I would urge you all not to support that approach. And, and I totally agree. <laughs> I had the same thought, which is the, they are not equivalent in the sense of size, scope, and all that. But one way or another, we are taking land. We are taking some mm. open space. Yeah. We have to. It's right. either that or buy something and tear it down, which we don't have. So I understand that Lars Anderson is perhaps qualitatively different from Lawrence and Devo and Pierce and whatever I'm forgetting, Driscoll. But that is open space we're taking as well. And it's open space that is, believe me, I love Lars Anderson. It's wonderful, but that's open space. These other open spaces are spaces in the very densest parts of town that need them as well. So my suggestion is that um, that as far as the motion is concerned, I, I hear uh, that Dummer Street could be added, mm -hmm. uh, but that uh, Lars Anderson and any of the other just mentioned uh, locations should, should not be on, uh, on this and, and should, there should be a robust discussion about that at a later time. Can we uh, can can we agree on that? I I would like us to vote on Lars Anderson. Okay, we can. We'll just vote on the amendments. Um, and I think uh, the easy way to do it 
I just want to be clear with everybody is we'll have a take a vote on Lars Anderson, take a vote on Dummer Street, and then take a vote on the motion either as amended or not amended. So, um, uh, are there any other amendments, though? No, but I, I think it's um, – I just want to make sure that we're um, – I, I don't think that we should lump Lars Anderson in with these other sites for the reasons that Rebecca mentions. But I do, do think that at some later date it ought to come up, maybe even some later hour, uh, it ought to come up for, uh, for a motion uh, or a discussion, at the very least a discussion, and then maybe that, there's that, some work that we need to do in order to get to well, a motion. Well, yeah, and, and in right. fairness, it never got the same level of review that exactly. uh, Amory and um, Lynch did. So yeah. if we give it the same level review, then we may or may not find that it's still uh, viable. So uh, uh, shall we uh, first take uh, a vote on, the, on uh, amending by adding Dummer Street? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Are there any abstentions? Okay. Uh, that be, before you finalize that, yes. Mr. Salmon mentioned to me before the meeting, he wasn't sure if we ever, if I ever reported on the BU meeting, and I honestly can't recall if we did or we didn't. Is that, do we need to go on record with the report of that BU meeting? Or well, I think we or, probably or, should. Or was, it, Why not? was it done? I don't right. know. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Do it. All right, good. So uh, let's, uh, but let's go to the uh, second potential amendment, which is Lars Anderson. Uh, uh, there wait, wait, wait. I think gonna, we, we've agreed that it's not going to. We'll gonna, have a vote at a later. We'll take oh, it. So we'll it's, take it up it's at a later been taken. Right. We're tabling. That, uh, we're tabling. We'll have a vote. That's fine. It's withdrawn. Yeah. Very good. That's withdrawn. As long as we have a vote at some point. At some point. All right. Okay, now I think uh, you want uh, if you yes, want to report okay. uh, on, uh, on uh, our discussion it, with it, Boston it, it University. Won't take, it won't take very long. Right. So we, we did have a meeting with uh, Boston University, with, and it was well attended. They brought uh, some, some high up uh, decision makers to, to the table. Um, Mr. Kleckner was there, myself, um, was, uh, Alan Moss was there, and um, we also, and Peter Rowe was there, and we had uh, general counsel for, for BU, their community outreach people, and uh, their development people. And they made it very clear to us that they sympathized with our, with our problem, and they, they, they wish they could help, but they have a long-range uh, master plan of their own, and they're hungry for space. And even though it looks like, for instance, the Dumma Street property is sitting there underutilized, it's not, and they say it's completely full, and they, they, they're not telling us what their plan is, but it seems like their short-range plan is, is, involves that, that specific property. Uh, and uh, as to the uh, Worthington Road property, um, you know, they, 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 they basically didn't, didn't, didn't even want to talk about that. That's what one of their uh, administrators uh, lives there, and uh, they've got, um, they've got, designs on, on everything that they own plus some. So that, that's where it is. There's, we were barking up the wrong tree, but we were uh, very politely treated. Questions about that? <laughs> right. We were politely. Right. Well, having, having said that, then um, I probably should report on my conversation with Barbara Salisbury, who is the executive director of Mass Association for the Blind. Um, who had been aware um, that we were interested in that property. And basically, she said they just spent a lot of money on a renovation. They are particularly pleased with that location um, because it has good public, public transit, and many of their clients have either um, brain damage and severe vision problems. And part of their um, program for their uh, clients is to teach them how to get around on their own and they want to be where they are because that's a very good environment for practice. Uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, could they move to Baldwin and she said basically it would be a very bad location. It would not meet their mission, which is to uh, help their clients become independent. And she also mentioned, which you might appreciate, Ken, that if they sold it, BU would outbid us. <laughs> All right, that takes care of MAB. All right, now, now let's go forward with that. Okay, so uh, uh, with regard to the motion, 
uh, amended uh, for Dummer Street. Uh, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. All those abstaining, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we have a vote on that motion. We have a second motion. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. It's total ignorance of not having been on a committee like this. Is this strict majority rules? Uh, yeah. Okay, just, just checking. I don't think there's any other requirement. Yeah. Well, there's no, no it's a good question. Super majorities? No, <laughs> just, I don't just think so. Okay. And actually, we are just trying to narrow our focus here. So the second motion uh, for consideration <laughs> is moved that uh, the B Space Committee removes from consideration as a site for a new K through 8 school, both the Baldwin site and the old Lincoln School, based on the findings of the K through 8 subcommittee for the Baldwin site and the need to retain old Lincoln School as flexible space for other potential town and school needs. Is there a discussion? Hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you very much, madam. Okay. Um, Mr. Mashinsky. I would suggest a amendment on the old Lincoln School language so that, uh, as it states, as flexible space for other potential town and school needs or as, um, uh, as, as potential, I'm thinking out loud, um, potential use in the, in the high school solution or in other, other, I don't know, space solutions, I don't know. Well, yeah, that yeah. was under school. We thought, we, we did think about that specifically and thought that that would come under the phrase school needs. Okay. Uh, but uh, if, if, because then there might be a, a several other, uh, we thought there might be several other options, some of which we may not even have uh, considered, uh, which would also uh, work under that. So uh, one of the, for example, that would leave it open. You may, the, uh, a concept school at Baldwin has, me, has been mentioned, but a concept school at Old Lincoln uh, would similarly uh, uh, be, that, that would similarly be an option, similarly be an option, even if we took it off the table as a K to right, 8. Right, right. So the, the key here is we're taking it off the table as a K to 8, leaving it on the table for other solutions, be they temporary or permanent. Yes. Be they concept school <coughs> inclusion into the high school solution. Right. Uh, well, all right, swing, would, it, would it be helpful if we add potential temporary or permanent school needs? Hmm? If that works. Um, yeah, I mean, my feeling is that the, that the motion is explicit. I, I have no objection to do, doing that except that it adds words that I don't think are necessary. The, the motion is simply to remove it from consideration as a site for a new K-8 school. Right, that's the heart of it, but so, I, I think there's value to, to, to stating that it's still on the table for some, to be a, a, a permanent part of the solution. It's just, we're taking it off the table for K to 8. Yeah, so I, I disagree with that too. It's not my, my, not my first alternative, it's not my, my, my leading preference, but I, I think I gotta recognize that the old Lincoln School is a new K-8 is a possibility. It's uh, it's probably the best of the worst, and um, I'm, I hope we don't have to go there. But I I would leave it on the table as a as a as a fallback position. Well, one thing I think it's contingent on taking it off the table as a K to eight. Really, it's the doability of the three swing space. <clears throat> if you don't have it for swing space. Can we do these other things we're talking about? I, um, Maybe. I, I, um, I had a question about that because, uh, and I think I uh, referenced that in the summary that I gave you, Betsy. That um, the um, question I have is, there are there are a couple of options that HMFH proposed, such as the high school plus three, that are likely to um, make us miss the deadline. Uh, and my question is, to what extent can we? 
get through that um, by uh, having a couple of years uh, when we have more than the current number of students uh, in the classroom as a way of absorbing that in order to, uh, well, in order, in order to take that buffer for that, that couple of years. Um, I don't know the extent to which a similar approach would work um, if we didn't have uh, old Lincoln as, uh, as swing space, and so I'm just asking the question. I, I mean, I haven't heard the opposite of what Jim and DeWitt just asked me. I, I haven't heard that we can only do this with old Lincoln. Um, you know, we, we rent space, and we and other communities rent spaces as swing space. I, I don't think the swing space argument just trumps Old Lincoln completely. Again, I don't uh, favor it as a solution, but I don't want uh, to... Add add some ball. information at least, all right? Um, and this uh, does again have to do with timing. Um, in looking at devotion, which is much further down the... Pro in, uh, further along in the process, um, the number... the time it takes to do the um, project is substantially affected by whether or not students can be housed off-site. And even um, what we know about devotion is that you can only put some of them at Old Lincoln. You couldn't even put all of them at Old Lincoln. But the cost of the project and the number of months it takes to do it is considerably affected by whether or not we have available space. And given that we haven't found private space for that kind of use, up until now, I'm not clear that we could afford not to have this available for that. Yeah. I, I understand it creates a whole new set of problems. I, I just don't think, you know, a, a lot of, this is going to have to be pitched to town meeting at some point. And a lot of your town meeting members who haven't been plugged in on this B-Space debate assume that that's the, that, 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 that's the number one alternative is the old, old Lincoln School. That's my, that's my read on and um, to, to take it off the table, you know, because it's just a matter of the, of the, the, the swing space, I, you know, I, I just don't agree with it. We can, I might be the only one voting on no, this, but. There you are. Um, um, there's one, there is another element to this, though, which is that one of our criteria is community support. And um, uh, I don't want to be, uh, pushed uh, in one direction or another uh, by loud, by particularly loud voices. Uh, if the if the logic suggests that the loud voices are mistaken, or don't, or, or I'll leave it at that, are mistaken. Um, so uh, I was actually thinking about um, that motion, and I'm uncomfortable also with uh, with taking it off the table. So if we take it off the table. What do we have left? Um, it's base. It's it's either the the, th the three plus high school or some flavor of it, or changing the the model. The the, the, the grade model. That's right. Yeah. Um, or a concept school. Or a concept school. Concept school theoretically. Now it seems it seems to me that um, I I don't think we can responsibly consider a concept school without a concept um, that's and 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 yeah. and a case hasn't been made that I've heard that uh, a concept school would solve the problem you know it seems to me we, we, if, if we're going to vote a concept school and have some confidence that it's going to solve the problem a plan should be before us that we could see and make a judgment on it seems to me too that in terms of changing the the grade configurations. Um, I don't. I don't know if there's been sufficient foundation put before the committee to go there. Uh, it seems to me we would need to know what that looks like, where it would be housed, how it would work. You know, uh, we we would need to see a plan uh, at some level, maybe a high level. You know, we don't have to see all the details, but something that would give us confidence that. Um, uh, that that this would work, and it's a responsible decision to uh, to, to, to make. Clearly, from a space perspective, uh, I can I can think of a number of reconfigurations 
that would make um, this whole thing a one building solution. Uh, you know, uh, you know, a seven to twelve, for example. You know, we could have a one building solution. Uh, but I, I, I haven't heard the pedagogical case for that, and I haven't seen how how it would work. You know, how how would how would it affect the uh, the staffing in, in the schools? Uh, the, the, the configuration of the existing spaces, what would happen to the science rooms uh, in, in, in the K-8 schools currently, you know, all, all those kinds of considerations which really haven't been put before us. And I don't think we have sufficient facts before us to make a decision to change the, the, the grade configuration model. So in my mind, that leaves us with the three plus high school or Old Lincoln, and if we if we pull out Old Lincoln, that leaves us with the three plus high school, and uh, and I think we should fully explore that. Make sure that it is practical. We can handle it uh, from a, from a uh, administrative perspective. Uh, you know, vet it. Uh, you know, so far all we have is a uh, a high level study saying, yeah, this is possible. Uh, here are some concepts. Is is it, you know, is, is that enough to make a decision? You know, it's really a 50-year decision. And so what, so I, I, I think we're, if, if we're going to go to a, a three-plus a th a three high school kind of model, uh, kind of solution, to me, I would say we should be suggesting a direction, um, not, not suggesting the absolute specific program, you know, you're going to put X number of classrooms here, Y number of classrooms there. We, we know generally where we want to put the classrooms, but it seems to me it's going to take additional study to figure out exactly w whether we're going to do four or five classrooms at Heath, you know, 12 or nine classrooms at Devotion, at Driscoll, et cetera. I know I'm rambling, but, but anyway, that's my thinking. And, and so you'd prefer... And so I guess I, I, I was uh, walking into this saying, okay, let's remove old Lincoln, but I think we're not ready to move, remove old Lincoln until we talk about the three-plus high school because, right. in my mind, that's all we have left. And if we're going to remove old Lincoln, we got to be damn sure that we're going to go with the three-plus high school. That's right. All right, so... Um, I have, I think, a motion to amend by deleting and old Lincoln School. Is that clear? Yep. Excellent. All right. Um, any other potential um, amendments to this motion? So this is we just have added the phrase temporary or permanent school needs. Yes, um, Ms. Stone. I, I don't have an amendment. I just, I'm not sure where this where this comment fits. So, so we should all bear in mind that if whatever set of recommendations we make to the school committee um, are subjected to uh, scrutiny and an override, and that override fails, um, we are going to be putting students at the old Lincoln School. And it won't be up to us anymore what the configuration is, and it won't be up to us anymore. We are simply going to be doing it because that's what we will have left um, if the override fails. And so I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the, you know, yes, it's an option for this. No, it's not an option for that. The, I, I think we can, in fact, say that, that given everything that we um, saw, and especially the point that Michael made, uh, at the last meeting, which is that Old Lincoln School is in the crosshairs for every single option we have, either as swing space or as a temporary eighth grade school or as a temporary ninth grade school or as a temporary K through eight or is it, I mean, and then it's, and then it's in line for swing space for whatever building we're going to have to do, whether that is expansion at the high school or renovations at one of our elementary schools, which we almost certainly want to do, um, that it makes, it made sense to me to take it off this, the table as a site for a K-8 because I think that what the deliberations of this committee were leading us to was that we don't have a viable site for a new K-8 school. We don't. And 
please, unless, please. Unless that K-8 school is a concept school that draws from town in some other way than redistricting. And that's why I was willing to well, take it off as see, a See, I, I agree with you school. that old Lincoln, if, if I didn't have, in, in my mind, if, if the three plus high school can work, that's where I am. So, so before I take Old Lincoln off the table, and I don't, I don't think it's a good site for a K-8, uh, but it's one of our two options. It's, it's not a good option, but it's, it's, the only, it's the only viable option other than if we're, if we're keeping our K-8 neighborhood model, it's the only viable option other than three plus high school, and we haven't, I don't think we've, talked it through the three plus high school to the point where we, we, we're ready to commit to that. So when, when we're ready to vote on the three plus high school, that's the time I think to also vote on Old Lincoln. Michael? So um, I, um, I'm like you, I think that the three plus high school is the optimum choice, assuming that it's feasible. Um, I'm more comfortable that it's feasible because I think it really has to be. Um, and whatever, uh, that's why I asked the question about um, whether if it stretches out the timeline, it's possible to absorb extra students by enlarging class size for some, you know, couple of years, something of that, uh, of that nature, because I think we won't be able to do all four, really, schools and the high school within the time frame that we're talking about. So I don't know what the other, what the, what the solution is if we have to extend the timeline. I'd like to hear a little bit about that. But listening to, um, you know, listening to the management issues and the, you know, the administrative issues and the construction issues and so forth, just the same, I think, well, if that's the best choice for the long run, that has to be the way that, uh, that, uh, that we do it, even if it's very messy in the meantime. Um, but like you, I agree. I think we need to leave Old Lincoln there as a backstop. Would, would it make sense to go through this list and take off the things we all can relatively easily agree to take off and then focus our conversation on these three or possibly four things because we're sort of diving in and out of Old Lincoln or not, concept yep. school or not, uh, changing the K-8 model or not? And we're going to wind up doing this very piecemeal, right. and maybe we can get rid of, excuse me, eliminate options that we all fairly easily uh, can agree on. That's a suggestion. I'm not sure how many of them there are. But. Well, there's some. I know. We yeah, could. I feel like we've come this way with the old Lincoln oh. one. Why don't, we, why don't we finish this? Okay. Then we've said everything that needs to be said. Yeah, we let's have to say it all over again. Right. Right. Let, let, let's vote if we if let's vote on this way at a later date. We'll we can vote to take it off if we have another solution. We can move reconsideration. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> okay. Then. Um. So actually, the way to structure it would be um, have an amendment to remove old Lincoln from the language that either goes up or down. And then, the, uh, and then the main motion would be the whole thing. Yeah, right. I mean, we'll with the uh, with the alternate language that you added. If you mean temporary or permanent, right. we've got temporary yeah. or permanent as a separate thing, uh, or to put it differently, as I understood it, and now I'm beginning to feel confused. Um, the first amendment is to remove Old Lincoln from consideration for a new K through eight, or not, right? Yes. And the second is an amendment that adds the phrase temporary or permanent to school needs, but the rest of the language is not changed. Right, although um, uh, uh, it, actually it's not just a matter, it, 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 it's, you don't need the second amendment if the first one passes. Um, because uh, if we're right. leaving old Lincoln on the table, then it, there's no need to say, well, we'll retain it as flexible space for other potential right. needs. Right. It's, it's moved. Okay. All right. So, all right, then the a motion is to amend by deleting 
the words and old Lincoln School. Correct. Um, and 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 to delete as a practical matter the sent the part of the sentence and the need to retain OLS as a All as right, flexible so space. So we yeah. just put a period after Baldwin. Yeah. I mean after site. Yeah. Right. Put right. in a period after site. Well, and and I'll just state publicly that um, I'm going to vote for that under the proviso that this comes back up after we have yeah. our oh, yeah. three. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, it's not a selection. We're not right. saying we're just let's at select this point in our process. Right. Yeah. We're just not deselecting it at this point. Yeah. Okay. Then are we ready? And okay. we're clear about what we're doing. Um, and actually, maybe Michael, you would rephrase what you just said by taking well. The okay. Parody. So move, move to uh, amend the motion um, by deleting the words and OLS mm -hmm. based. I'm sorry, and, and, and OLS, right. um, and delete the words, and the need to retain OLS as flexible space for other potential town and school needs. So there's okay. a period after the word site. Right. So right. it reads. Move. So it now reads, move that B space committee removes from consideration as a site for, new, for a new KA school. The word both should come Actually, out. Actually, the word bald, yeah. both needs to come yeah. out. Right. The Baldwin site. Right. Uh, based on the findings of the K3 uh, subcommittee, K8 subcommittee for the Baldwin site. Okay, are we all clear about this? Second. All right. Can I make a comment? Sure. Um, again, not that this is going to change anybody's mind um, about their vote, but please remember that uh, Old Lincoln School is the site that we've always talked about as putting the new K-8 population while we built the new K-8 school. Um, we cannot both turn it into the new K-8 school and put the population there in the interim. Hmm? Mm -hmm. right. And I will vote that way after we get through It's process. very true, and we might have to find another alternative Just, for, for it, it's like if it comes to that. It's like um, I lo I looked at, I, I, I've, I've looked at every single email that we've received from uh, the public, and some of them have been uh, really very, very helpful in terms of clarifying, you know, goes on. And one of the things is, it was one recently that said, you know, let's take old Lincoln off the table. You're ready to do that, aren't you? And my response to that is, you have to let the process run. And leaving old Lincoln there to knock it down a little bit later this evening or some other evening is part of the process. All right. So we're now going to vote on the modified language. And I'm going to read this as it would be modified. Move that the B Space Committee removes from consideration as a site for a new K through eight school, the Baldwin site, based on the findings of the K through eight subcommittee for the Baldwin site. That's how it would read. Right. So this is a vote to amend by removing the language. Right. And then if this vote fails, we go go on to the further. To the whole. Well, we right. go back to it as uh, before yeah. it, right, it, right, it right. was amended. Okay. All right. All in favor of this amended vote, please raise your hand. Okay. We have a tie. I think we have a tie. We take the rest of the vote. Uh huh. Because somebody's abstaining. I know. <coughs> and all opposed to the um, amended language. We have a tie. <laughs> so that sort of leaves us where we were before when we said we need to come back and consider it later. Why don't we move on and see whether we can resolve this well, and we can come back later. Right. right? Or do you want to vote it in its original form? I mean, we can do that too. I think the results will be the same. But uh, they might be. Yeah. That's why I'm saying let's move yeah. on. Yeah, I think, seems uh, to agree. I think that uh, we should move on and then come and, and agree to come back to this at the end of tonight's discussion. Okay. Okay. If that's all right, all right with people. I guess that highlights the importance of having an odd number on the committee. Yeah. <laughs> or everybody present in order to do that. Okay. Alan, going back to the first the motion, though, yep. didn't, we, didn't we only vote on – I don't think we covered all the, all the things that could be removed there. I think we only took – We added Dummer Street. As an amendment. I, 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 I could be wrong, but I thought that, that when the motion was made, it just talked about Worthington and Dumma. Did it include Amory? Yeah, yeah, oh, yes, 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 it did. Include all that. And Lynch. We moved yeah. Yes. With the 
edition of Dumber Street. Okay. All the other language is the same. Okay. okay. All right. Let's try again. Maybe this one will be easier. Do you want to read that one, Chairman? Sure. Move that the B Space Committee acknowledges the educational and logistical challenges noted during exploration of the following options and removes them from consideration as recommendations for a permanent change to the public schools of Brookline. An 8-9 school, either a single 8th grade or a single 6th grade school, and a super K through 8 using Old Lincoln as a second site for a larger K through 8 that would include, which would basically be a combined expanded district. All right, is there anybody who wants to keep any of these things? That's no. really the question. Can I just clarify? Sure. Thing. Um, the, um, I am just assuming that, I, that the reference to a permanent change um, to the public schools of Brookline is because uh, the possibility has been raised in the past that some of the options we may still consider um, might involve putting the eighth grade temporarily, for example, like we did with the ninth grade at the high school um, in, a, in a single school in order to, um, to tide us over to when the new option is available. That would still be allowable even with this. Well, is that this right? says permanent change, presumably. Okay. Right, Should that's why it does. Should we explicitly state that this doesn't preclude any temporary options for for any of these? For, for clarity, yeah. Good to okay. put that in. Somebody want to so suggest this? Permanent change. I thought permanent change kind of dealt with that yeah, myself, I, I, but I'm. That's why I said I'm assuming that that's what it means. Yeah. Um, but is, if there's any, if anybody thinks that there's any ambiguity about that, then we can clarify. Well, you're the one who brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said permanent is permanent. Okay. <laughs> All right. This let one the, seems less. Let the legislative history reflect. <laughs> <laughs> this one seems less <clears throat> controversial. Yes. So, and I just wanted to add that um, uh, in terms of uh, some of the drafts uh, that we have begun, that uh, there will be some additional explanation as to the reasoning behind uh, each of these. Some of these decisions? Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Motion? So yes. moved. So moved. All right. Seconded? Second. All in favor of the motion that B Space Committee acknowledge the educational and logistical challenges, et cetera, as previously read out, please raise your hand. Anybody opposed? All right, I think we did that one. Next, we have another list. And this is a list with um, a set of options that we might wish to continue to consider uh, going forward and would be uh, the subject of further discussion. So the going forward considerations would be expand at some K through eights, which we've been shorthand recalling, calling it three plus high school option. Um, for a high school, if it's a nine through 12 high school, options should include expanding on the current campus site or to build a second high school. Uh, the possibility of a concept school, and this says at the Baldwin site, um, might want to modify that, um, but that uh, the understanding is it would draw town wide. Um, then to remove youngest or oldest students from K through eights, and that simply refers to the possibility that if um, kindergarten becomes part of an early education center that's pre-K and kindergarten, it frees up about 24 classrooms, which is a, goes a long way to solving the space problem. And the alternative would be to combine uh, seventh and eighth grade into high school which has the equal effect of freeing up classrooms that um, therefore would mean that we could continue with our existing K through eights. Um, and so a subset of that would be early childhood centers uh, as a worth exp exploration. And finally, um, two high schools um, and the suggestion is again addressing the space question 
um, 7 through 12 high schools, which removes the need to uh, add as many additional classrooms in K through 8s. So, discussion and amendments? Um, is this a stage at which we want to have a, a robust discussion about the second high school? Probably. Okay, let's do that. Go forward. Uh, Go for it. Okay, <laughs> so... Um, uh, second high school, whether 9 through 12 or um, 7 through 12, uh, there are two concerns I'd like to bring forward. One is um, the practical uh, concern of a place to put it and the cost associated with it, because I think um, the chances of the uh, cost of building a second high school uh, running away with itself are more substantial than the cost of the um, uh, three plus uh, high school uh, uh, plus high school uh, option that we talked about. Um, the second thing is that assuming that the only place to put a second high school is basically Chestnut Hill, South Brookline, uh, I'm very uncomfortable with splitting the town uh, in that way. That um, uh, the, um, uh, if you could split the high school population so that you were um, uh, economically, um, uh, e roughly there was uh, 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 parity uh, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in the socioeconomic um, pop, uh, demographics of the two schools, that would be great, but you can't. Because uh, if you did that, you'd have some kids from one corner of Brookline going to high school and the other, or at least you probably wouldn't uh, do that. Uh, and on the basis that you would tend to have the high schools be geographically focused, I think uh, we'd be making um, a, an error that is a, how shall I put it, a social error, as opposed to, a, uh, uh, or a socioeconomic error, as opposed to uh, an error related to um, the operation of the schools themselves. Okay, and I just want to throw something out because I think this is going to get a little bit complicated. Can we have um, at least a combi combined conversation about whether we have two high schools, whether they're 9 through 12 that's, or 7 yeah, through 12? Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Yeah. Okay, because I think we need to focus on whether there is um, value or whether we want as a group to retain the option of discussing two high schools which, as we all understand, involves um, requiring a second site. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just will uh, deal with the two high school concept, whichever sure. one. Um, uh, first of all, it seems to me that there is some risk, which we have not yet determined, as to whether or not the uh, traffic and parking problems uh, in connection with a 2,500 uh, high school student high school at uh, its existing location is is manageable. I've actually uh, inquired about that. I talked to the um, transportation administrator, although I talked to him via email actually about it. Um, and it is a challenge, but it is not um, uh, it, it's not an impossibility. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, uh, in that context, we talked about the other school sites that we talked about and, and the one place where he felt we would be um, stressing the ability of the, um, of the streets to hold the vehicles um, is actually Lawrence, not the high school. Okay, interesting observation. I, I guess that um, uh, depending on your response, because I know you know more about transportation by a long shot than I do in parking and everything that goes with it. Um, I do know that uh, our administration would like to examine that uh, 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 separately. I mean, not knowing yeah. that, that uh, of your comments, sure. that they would yep. like to examine that uh, professionally. They, are, they have some concern about it. Oh, I, um, okay. it, it, I wasn't, I'm not suggesting the It'll be easy, I, but yeah. I'm just suggesting it's feasible. Okay, yeah. so that's uh, number one. Uh, number two, I, I know that there's been some discussion about the Lars Anderson location, but uh, I'm not uh, there yet by any manner, 
shape or manner uh, as to uh, it's not being a good location. Uh, so um, uh, I, and I'm not sure that that carries with it some of the same implications that you were talking about out in Chestnut Hill. Thirdly, um, the diversity of uh, our student population is a major factor uh, that uh, we have, and, um, and that's, I think, something that we would want to apply to our high school, uh, high schools, too, mm -hmm. uh, if, if, uh, if we go that route. Uh, and fourthly, um, I think uh, uh, that the, uh, the opportunity of a second high school carries with it the possibility of, uh, of creating some innovation and improvement uh, that we probably couldn't do uh, in a single high school, just to give two examples, one would be to introduce the international baccalaureate uh, 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 approach as opposed to the uh, AP uh, approach, having a, a choice there. And the second, uh, which I've talked about some time uh, quietly within the school system, is to uh, create a uh, more robust set of uh, opportunities for students who feel that uh, once they graduate from high school at the present time, they'd like to go to work rather than uh, going to college, uh, and that our offerings there at the existing high school uh, are not, uh, are not uh, adequate enough to give them options. So that's a second possibility. I, I don't want to say that you know, these would be the only ones, or maybe that these would even be the ones. But just to give you some examples of how a second high school might offer some opportunities for innovation uh, that might not uh, necessarily be true if we were to remain with one high school. So for particularly for those reasons, along with what I understand generally uh, is a, a significant cost difference uh, for example, f between the 7 through 12 option mm. and what we're going to find out for the uh, 3 plus 1 option. And cost, I think, being ultimately a not the driving consideration, but a significant uh, consideration um, that I, uh, I, I would want to keep for the present time the uh, two high school option open. I'd like to second that and add there's, I totally agree that uh, having two high schools in town and splitting them geographically would be a terrible idea. There's no question about that. Um, I think that also I think on the table it should be, I'm not sure why it's 7 through 12 and 9 through 12 and not 8 through 12 as well as another possibility. I don't know why we've not focused on that, but it seems to me that there are several options in there. <clears throat> and um, I think that in terms of cost, um, for what it's worth, I'm an architect. Build, I'd much rather build a new building on a new site than work on four buildings on existing sites. Mm -hmm. Cost-wise, there is no question which one is better controlled. Um, you open up old buildings and you find all sorts of interesting things. So the cost issue to me is, at best, not an issue um, in, in terms of what you were discussing. Mm -hmm. and, and lastly, I'd like to say that I think that um, though this may not be the direction he was intending, um, Bob Sperber a long time ago said, be bold. <clears throat> and I think we should be bold. And I think going for a, a new high school and the programs that Alan was talking about or other programs and looking at how can we take Brookline forward and not just, not that there's anything wrong with where we are, but not just stay where we are. I was going to say, you'll increase the flood from Jamaica Plain. Well, <laughs> that's, a pro that's part of the problem too, but uh, it's a potential problem. But I think that looking forward to what can we do with this, as well as what I'd said earlier about what will we be doing to our three K through eights if we renovate them. All the issues, the short-term issues and the long-term issues, and finally the flexibility that we would get by having much more capacity, so. <clears throat> um, I, I, I would agree with that, but, um, we, we haven't really fully explored what a, a second high school would look like. Uh, um, we, we have this amorphous concept. How, 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 how big would it be? 
uh, we, we heard that um, if it's in the 800 student range, um, we, we could do it at the Baldwin Sewell, uh, Sewell site. And if, if, if we're looking at a 1,200 uh, student uh, uh, school, then the only site we've identified thus, thus far is uh, Lars Anderson. And uh, I, I think we, we need to kind of vet that with the community. In, in, and, and I suspect we're going to get a similar reaction to doing that, that we got to uh, uh, Amory, uh, to, to the point where uh, I suspect that it's going to be a very controversial um, kind of thing, putting an override uh, in, in jeopardy. So I, I, I I don't think we're ready. I, I think we need more facts before we uh, kind of go in that direction. I've already said earlier tonight. I, I, I don't want to take a second high school off the table, but it's it's you know clearly for me a a later alternative if other things don't work. So I, I don't want to take it off the table, but. All the reasons Michael said, the lack of a suitable space. You know how I feel about Lars Anderson, and um, you know it's um, and in the in the lack of a somebody having presented to us a pedagogical model for it. If you, if if you came to me and you said this is what we want to do, this will improve education, then I'd be happy to work on a way to, to, to make it happen, but I haven't heard that. I've heard we could do this, we could do that, but I, you know, to, ba to base a decision on what we could we do down the road, I don't think is, uh, is, is uh, advisable. Anyway, leave it on the table for now. Maybe somebody will come up with it between next week, between now and next week. Um, if I may, um, I am able uh, to get excited, frankly, about both the three plus, um, the high school option um, under certain configurations, not under others. Um, my own uh, dream about the three plus high school option would, um, would take the, the dramatic expansion away from Lawrence and instead use this as an opportunity to renovate um, uh, the Pierce School in a manner that it has been waiting for for many too many years. Um, by taking down the 1970s edition and building there. Um, that, that said, um, what we are proposing, um, uh, which I believe is doable and, um, and main, would maintain our schools, I think the problems that Philip mentioned about the nature of very large schools is, is real. I worry a lot about that. Um, I don't think, pres I mean, and, I, and I think preserving the walkability um, is important, but I think there are other ways to do that and other models that still preserve the walkability, especially um, in the grades that tend to walk to school um, with their parents anyway. Um, and, uh, and so when I look at the three plus high school option, I'm also looking at option that is logistically as Philip also pointed out, extraordinarily challenging, and, and that's the politest thing I can say about it in terms of what it would take um, to manage that many big projects, and we're talking about very, very big projects here. Um, and, um, and the price tag, if you include the fact that let's, let's just go off of the HMA, HMFH numbers, which are probably low, and we're only talking about construction costs anyway, none of the other ancillary costs. Um, so they were absolutely low, even, even from a starting point. Um, let's just say that whatever we do at the high school, whether we're expanding in place or building a new one, is going to be probably uh, $70 million um, on, the, on the low end. Um, the, uh, the three plus um, high school then is $70 million um, there. It is uh, devotion at whatever it ends up being. Um, if it's $90 million um, I, or, I, or less than that, if it's slightly different, it's still um, a substantial project. Driscoll, um, if we're putting 12 classrooms at Driscoll, which we've sort of agreed would be necessary to make the redistricting work, is a lot more than HMFH told us originally. So that's getting up into the 20 or $30 million range. Um, we, are, we are edging our way, and, and I haven't even included, right, building, uh, building new um, elsewhere. So uh, we're talking about asking for um, a logistically 
um, almost all but impossible um, set of projects. Um, not saying that they're impossible, not saying that we couldn't find a way. We are Brookline. My God, we find a way to do so many things. It's a miracle. But, um, but it would take a miracle um, to make that work. Um, and, and the price tag is, in, in my mind, very quickly bumping up against $200 billion, potentially. Um, and, and on the off chance that we are not wrong about the enrollments because they are too high and will level off at a much lower level, but too low, and we will continue to expand our, res do residential development, which a lot of this town is very in favor of, and the families will continue to have more units to come into, to come to the schools. Um, there is also the very real possibility that the enrollments will not, in fact, level off at 600. They haven't leveled off there yet. We are projecting 620 or higher for next fall. So um, on the, you know, in the event that we are low on those enrollment numbers, we are maxing out every possible penny we will ever spend on our schools. Um, and we're getting a great thing for it. If we actually managed to do Pierce and we did Driscoll and we did Devo, then we would have, as I said, I can get excited about it because then we would have renovated all of our schools. We would have really substantial, um, uh, we, we would have done everything that the, that the K-8 schools have wanted to do in that long CIP and we would have done it in one fell swoop. On the other hand, um, we would have precluded being able to do anything if we're wrong um, about, the, about the enrollments. Um, so I think that on the one hand, I can get excited about it. It does a lot of things for the schools that I really like. Um, as a school committee member, I can, I can really, I can, I can build up a, you know, a head of steam um, for, for that option. I'm really, really worried about the price tag and going to the voters with a price tag that big um, for schools that only 18% of our um, households use and, uh, and, um, uh, and being told no um, and then squeezing everybody into old Lincoln Anyway, um, that worries me. So I, so I think that, um, on the other hand, um, for many of the reasons that, that Philip and Alan have already articulated, I can get really excited about being bold um, about a 7 to 12 model. It has downsides, no question about it. Second high school has downsides, no question about it. Um, are they as big as the downsides of a 3 plus high school option? I don't know. Um, there are some significant upsides. Um, it would allow us, pedagogically, just so you know, um, the research is ambiguous about 7 to 12s, but there are lots of them out there. Um, in Cincinnati, they went to 7 to 12s from K-8s and found their test, test scores going up across the board, comparing the 7 to 12 kids with the K-8 kids. Again, this is just you know, one set of data, but it's not like we don't know what 7 to 12s look like. They're all over the place. Pedagogically, um, we already teach 7 and 8 as a, as a block, so we're not changing the pedagogical model really at all. We're just shifting the 7s and 8s from being with all younger kids to being with all older kids but they're still having classes with each other, they're still eating lunch with each other, they're still doing extracurriculars with each other. It just shifts where we are. But pedagogically, we're not talking about changing the Brookline model really much at all in terms of how we teach seventh and eighth grade. Um, we've talked for a long time, I've talked in particular on the school committee since I was elected eight and a half years ago um, about the the downside of K-8 is that we don't give our middle school students the opportunities in programming that they would get in, uh, in, a, in a school focused on that developmental age. Um, and they lose something for that. They gain something, absolutely, from the K-8 model you know, in terms of social-emotional, um, but not all the kids love that. When, uh, and not all the parents love it for their kids. When MGT was hired in 2008 to do the facilities master plan, they did a community charrette. They did lots of focus groups um, in this community, and they found that the K-8 model was very, very popular 
and the report is is on the B Space website. Um, people can read it. Actually, it's on the it's on the school's website. Um, and they found that while the parents really loved the K-8 model for all of the reasons that have been articulated many times, the students um, were very willing to, um, to consider uh, different models. The, our 7th and 8th graders, especially our 8th graders, um, frequently feel uh, that they are more than done with their tiny schools and the people they've been going to school with for all those years, and they're ready to move on. They also would like to have more space to, um, for athletics. They would like uh, programming that actually suits their needs. We have talked, so, so there's that. Um, we would be able to do things programmatically for that age group that we have never been able to do and would likely still not be able to do, especially in much larger K through eights, um, if we kept them there. Um, we would solve this problem with one building. And we would be able to remediate our others, probably given, you know, our, our usual, our, our usual sane approach to, um, to the CIP. Um, and it, raises the very real possibility of being able to bring pre-Ks back into the buildings, which we have desperately wanted to do. So that, I can, like, as I said, I can build up a real head of steam for this one. It's, it feels very good, and we can do it with one building, which is basically $100 million, and we're done. And that, it seems to me, um, is something that with the pedagogy and with the opportunities and with the boldness of vision that could be put into a model like that um, could be extraordinarily appealing um, to the population. Um, we just have to think about it not as adding a deficit somehow to Brookline, but as actually doing, being able to do things, being given the opportunity to do things in the schools that we have wanted to do and that the other options will not give us a similar opportunity to do. So for that, as I said, I can build up a head of steam for either of these options, but I think it absolutely has to be on the table and we ought to think about thinking about it very differently. So I don't, I don't have a problem with anything you said. My only problem is having enough facts to make a decision to go there. And I don't have the feeling that we have thought it through. And I think if we're going to seriously consider that, we need to think it through and see what that would do. What would, what it, what would it do to the, our existing buildings? Could our, what would be the high school configuration? Uh, can, can, what would a seventh and eighth in, 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 in the high school look like? Uh, what would the school buildings, the existing K to eights, without the seven and eight look like? Um, and I, 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 I and, and that's kind of a staff. You know, we, we, I, I would usually we would have staff kind of, you know, try, try to work through that kind of proposal. So I don't, I don't know how we get there in, in the time frame if we're going to seriously consider it. Um, the um, one thing is. Um, we're trying to. Uh, I, I wonder if we're uh, uh, we're trying we we're trying to do the right the uh, the correct thing here. Um, are we, uh, Mr. Chairman? Are we looking at um, including um, the option of a seven through twelve or a nine through twelve second high school, or are we talking here, as a couple of us have been, I think, including myself, about excluding it? That is uh, uh, complete, uh, well, I suppose two sides of the same coin. But are we, if we include it in the set, okay, that doesn't necessarily say we're going to do it. It says we're going to give ourselves the time to get Correct. the data that Neil's looking for. It, it's that option. Yes. All right. And, and just to be clear, I, I think it was further discussion is the context. Yeah. I have so, no problem with anything Rebecca said either, and I'm glad that this is being articulated in those in those terms right now. But um, but we need we got to make a decision here quickly. And as, as Neil says, th there's a lot that goes into that that evaluation. Well, and, it's, and I still I still don't know where this is going. But, right. And it's not as let, far as I'm concerned, it's not going. Let, let me try things. to. Um, because I don't think we have enough information to make a determination, and that's not our goal right now. Um, but would it make sense for us to keep on the table 
the thought of two high schools, whether they're 7 to 12 or 9 to 12. Um, I think the, um, the change to being a 7 to 12 certainly has other ripple effects compared to a 9 to 12. Um, just in terms of the way the elementary schools are organized. So um, I don't think they're identical, but for further discussion, if it's of, um, if there are um, reasons why we want to learn more about this, then we should hold them both on the table. It, it seems to me a 9 to 12 is the worst of all possible worlds because it leaves us with uh, Three plus uh, high, high school. We're building a new high school, and in addition, we still have to do yeah, you the complexity the right. of yeah. the elementary schools. Right. Right. To me, that that's not a particularly attractive choice. Um, so I would, at the very least, take that one off and leave the K through. Sorry, leave the, the seven through twelve up for discussion because, as you say, that is a one building solution. The difficulty is there's only one place that we can identify to put that building, and some of us are very reluctant to put it there, and some people in the community will. There's only one site that's been identified for us. Well, we've been looking at the sites for a lot of different things. Uh, I don't think, you know. I don't think we're going to revisit the rejected yeah. sites for yeah. the extra high school. So so how do we, how, how do we get, uh, if, if, if we're going to seriously consider 7 to 12, how are we going to get what that's going to look like? How are we going to get the information we need? To make that decision responsibly. May I say one thing? Please. I, I don't know if you remember early in our considerations of options, we did consider 7 8 as a standalone uh, option. And we had Dr. Lupini talk with us about some of the programming that he might consider. And we even considered a potential site, but it's privately owned, so we didn't go there. Now, if, if, if we just combine some of those concepts and put them in the location of the high school, but the 7th to 8th um, model of instruction would still be intact. We, we have discussed that we do need more discussion along those lines. We tabled it. We didn't continue, but that, that was an ongoing discussion early in our committee. I don't know if you remember back. In yeah, no, that's true. That's true. So it's not that we haven't considered it. It's just been a while since we've looked at those options. But, so, but, but we do need more discussion of some of the programming. How would we um, shield our 7th and 8th graders and really focus on their educational needs? We need that from our superintendent of schools. But by keeping the 7 to 12 model, I think that would allow us to explore that more with him. And, and he actually talked about, even more recently, things like, um, I forget the language, but subdividing into smaller groups and you know, con sort of contained houses or whatever the term was, I forget. It wasn't specifically for 7 to 12, but it was about the size of high school and how do you make this feel like a more intimate, more familiar, more uh, less overwhelming dive in all at once kind of place. So right. that has, those things have been, they have been floating around. Right. He talked about the Hudson, the design of the Hudson school in that can I, regard. Can I ask, does a 7-12 does model with two high schools, does that, is it a given that the town gets divided geographically between those two high schools or is that No, No, I think in fact, I, I'm, I'm just my so own So how would opinion. they be allocated if it's not by district? Some of it might be choice if the, uh, if the um, how would you, choices uh, How would were, you establish choice? certain programs yeah. yeah exactly that's right I mean it's 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 again this All is right. we just had a conversation about specialized programs in elementary schools and heard an argument about why we have them distributed equally everywhere in order to maintain equity and diversity no, give that me that a, argument for two separate schools with separate separate high schools with separate programs how would you do that um, the uh, the issue of town-wide special education programs is a very different issue. Um, the, whether or not one could, and again, this is, um, 
since we don't have to make this decision tonight, I think this falls in the realm of the things that, um, that Neil was saying we needed some more information on, and, and I agree. Um, the, I, I don't know how other towns have done um, 7 to 12, where it exists. I think that's certainly worth looking into um, to see how they've handled it, if they have two high schools. Um, certainly the idea of having um, one high school uh, take the, the um, traditional um, academic track that we have at BHS using uh, AP courses as the accelerated program um, and having the other high school uh, having the other high school be more oriented towards project-based learning and an IB type accelerated program um, would be one way of providing um, a choice for uh, learning types um, that would be, uh, that would not necessarily divide along intellectual capability lines, it would divide along learning style lines, which gives um, both places a way, and again, I'm just, I'm, I'm spitballing here. So, um, so it's, uh, but that's one way you could imagine the two high schools being equitable, but still different enough to offer a real choice um, as the kids are, are moving up. And maybe some of it is done with um, geography, but you add to the geography a sense of you could do um, application across the same way we do with our elementary schools. Um, so there are ways to think through this that aren't, uh, that aren't scary. I don't have the answer, but I, I believe that there is an answer out there. But I'll, I'll further that because uh, Dr. Lupini was talking about the programs. Um, one of them was cooking, I remember. I don't remember what the others. There was something about, was it mechanics? Yes. No, there, and, there are a variety. Um, there are health. There's a health. There are health uh, there's a variety of specialized ones, um, and one is to do with uh, television production. Okay, so, so those programs, which Dr. Lupini did talk about as we would love, or he would love, we would all love, therefore, to have more space for those students pursuing those programs. And so some of those programs can be at one high school, and some can be, and when we start trying to divide up who's where and what is the mix and what is the balance, I would guess that we have pretty good way of helping get the diversity we would like to have so that it's not all one, all the other, north, south, none of those divisions need to apply. I, I think that would be, I don't know, I'm not a teacher either, but uh, I suspect that that would be something that could be done fairly handily. So, um, well, I, th I think because of the time, I'm just, I'm suggesting that we, we not continue, I mean, we're at a, a, a point where I suspect, I don't want to speak out of turn here, that we're not ready to give up uh, the second high school concept right now. Right. And we were talking about this list, and we might uh, still have to touch on some of the so other. So how do we get I'm, beyond I'm, the I'm spitballing and the I guess? I'm ready to give up the 9 through 12. Uh, that's I easy. Would, that's that's, right. that's, easy that's fine. Can we do that? Yeah, that's an easy All one. All right, can we delete 9 through 12? Because that's a second 9 through 12. Yep. Yeah. It leaves you with, as I said, it leaves you with all of the issues that you have with the elementary yeah. schools. It doesn't solve any of that. Right. It just solves right. the high school. I, I, I agree. I mean, I think, I think just looking at it um, logistically as well as financially, yeah. um, I think the only way to afford a, a, the second high school is to, is to have either an expand in place for BHS or um, a 7 through 12 for the second high school. Yeah. I'm, all right, I'm, so should we have expand on one site as a high school solution or a 2, 7 through 12 as an alternative solution? Yes. Expand on the site, the campus. Expand on the campus for one, one high school or have two 7 through 12s. Either of those should be available for consideration. All right? 9 through 12 would be an expansion on the existing site, and if we did two, they should be 7 through 12s. Yeah. All right. right. Wow. All right, so a single 9 through 12 expanding on, on the campus, on the BHS campus. The alternative is two seven through twelves. That, I mean, we would keep both of those as options: expand a nine through twelve, or 
two seven through twelves. So expand seven. the nine through twelve as part of a three plus high school option, essentially. Well, it could be, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well, sorry, sorry, I take it back. No, it's not. It's a it's, replacement. It's it's. it's no, a no, 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 seven no, no, no. twelve. It's, it's not. <laughs> I take back what I said because yeah. we could wind up with some other default and yeah. still do the expansion nine through twelve on site. Yes. All right. Okay, so then we have not eliminated a um, nine through twelve expansion, and we have not eliminated two seven through twelves. Have we eliminated a concept school? So um, the concept school uh, gets these incredibly lukewarm responses from the superintendent, and I'll, I apologize for characterizing his responses. He's not here to defend himself, but I don't sense any real enthusiasm for this at all as a solution. As he said, and I think he's right, um, co communities that have developed a concept school, a magnet school, or something of that sort have done so because they like the concept, not because they're trying to solve an enrollment problem. And we don't have a concept. And I just don't see this developing the concept, getting the energy behind it, and getting it done in time, as attractive as an, an idea as it might be to uh, solve the problem. It's not there. And if, if you were to promote that, then I would fall back on what Neil says, is we don't know enough about it Whereas for the high school. Whereas I feel like for the high school, maybe we do. But I, so I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing oh, OK. All right. I'm agreeing with you. All right. I'm totally agreeing with you. OK. The idea that I mean, the sixth grade concept school was wonderful. We all got, or many of us get very excited about that. It faded for a number of reasons. And then I agree. It has not been something much as I like the idea in theory, A, we don't have a concept, and B, it's hard to see how that would draw equitably. The high schools, I understand, drawing from 8Ks to a concept school, I, I'm willing to be convinced, I don't see it. I see that as a big problem. Draw equitably and draw predictably. Well, predictably is more, nice issue, more so, issue than equitable, yeah. yeah. So All I right, think so is concept school off? Can we move on? Yep. Yes. All right. Do we need to vote? Well, we're going to go through the list, and then we'll vote the list. Uh, but at the moment, we're assuming concept school will not appear on a final list. How about early ed centers? Um, so there are two things that have been presented about early ed centers. Mm -hmm. One is the discussion with Pine Manor and Wheelock, and the other is the um, uh, Kinder Home. The Kinder, Kinder Home concept that you circulated to us uh, um, just a couple days ago, right? Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, I have uh, the um, the Pine Manor Wheelock uh, is an open. We uh, basically we have no no information about that. If you can give well, us well, we a don't bit have about anything that. definitive. The, the no. problem with that option, yeah. which is theoretically very attractive, is that there isn't anything substantive that we can point to that we have been able to put together. Okay, all right. And, and, so, and, and as I understand it, Pine Manor, there's not even an interlocutor, there's not even somebody to talk with at this point. Well, no, uh, we, did find out, we did find out who to talk to, and in fact, I talked to that person, yep. uh, and he promised to get back to me, uh, I think a, a week ago, and he did not, and so I gave him a call, uh, reminded him, and asked him to call, and he has once again not gotten back to me so that I'm drawing the conclusion that um, it's there's nothing there's nothing there I don't think you need to get to the conclusion yet because you talked to a trustee and the tr they just appointed an interim president it may be the trustee could not speak for the new president that's we don't know that that he, and he was going to talk to that person but all I'm saying is as of now right uh, we don't have anything uh, substantive yeah. to talk about, that's all. Yeah, and, and it doesn't, as a practical matter, it's unlikely to develop in soon enough for us to abandon everything else that we've been talking about here because that's what we'd have to do. That's my impression. Okay. Especially with an interim president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Right. Um, and the other, the kinder homes, um, the thing that I see with the kinder homes is um, it's an interesting idea on the one hand. On the other hand, I think to myself, don't kindergarten children belong in the elementary school? Haven't we talked about not having a, a, a adding a transition uh, between schools? And wouldn't it be great to have beep and kindergartens back in the schools? Uh, and the other aspect of it is, if we add eight small kindergarten centers, we're basically adding eight little schools, and we have all of the um, 
administrative and overhead issues with a little school that we have with the big one. Uh, and I think that will add a long-term administrative and cost burden and complication that we just don't need. Okay. And I, now I say that knowing zero <laughs> about, about the kinder home concept per se. You know, I, I just, you know. Other comments? Um, like many of these, I, um, I wouldn't want to stop talking about it based on what we know right now. Um, the, the way we got to the three plus high school option was by saying um, that, I, that the, the big new K-8 didn't look like it was working, so what were the other options available to us? Again, the idea of early childhood centers is one with a lot of, uh, of pedagogical support and research support out there. Um, and, uh, and it's one that, again, um, in terms of the quality education piece, we could get excited about um, early childhood centers as a concept. I think what we have to subject the concept to is how would it work? Um, would it be, uh, we already have, I mean, Bill has said at, at these meetings, one of the problems is we've already removed the pre-Ks from mm. almost all of the buildings. So removing the kindergartens to add to that um, doesn't actually give us the number of classrooms that we need, especially if you consider the 26 classrooms by 2017 to be a little on the low side. Um, so it also doesn't address any of the remediation for um, uh, for common spaces anyway. So, so there, there are issues, but again, we don't quite know. So the question is, um, so the question is we need to, I think we would need to run those numbers and actually find out whether or not it solves the problem, that being one of our big musts um, in terms of the scrutiny. We would need to, which can be relatively easily done, it seems to me, um, but we would also need to look at um, the possibility that some of our current pre-K centers where we have we are now grouping could become pre-KK. Does that work? Um, is there some combination of center-based as we do now with pre-K and school-based? So maybe kinder homes are not everywhere, maybe there are a few. I don't know how this works, but it seems to me that, that what we can do is say that the concept of early childhood centers that combine pre-K and K has robust support out there in the educational community. The question is, does does some version of that actually solve the problem for Brookline that we've been charged to solve? And so what are the questions we need to ask to um, answer that? Well, actually, I think we do know that the number of classrooms released numerically is close. It's like 24 to 25. So it's not, that, that is probably something that could be quickly and easily verified. But I would think along, along Rebecca's lines, uh, I think we would need to see, okay, what, what, what does this really look like? You know, what, what, what are the potential sites and what right. are the problems with those sites and would we have to bring them up to certain codes, right. et cetera, et cetera. And would we be eligible for MSBA? Which is something certainly on the cost worth side, leaving it on the list to get conditions. their reaction. Yeah, and their reaction is going to be, oh, that's an interesting idea, but uh, as we've discussed, the bureaucracy of actually getting that idea accepted is not a trivial matter. Right. But it's also, I mean, we sort of have on the table right now, we have this, this the core idea is um, solving the problem by either removing the youngest children or the oldest children, right? So those, those are the two, the two ends of the same basic idea. Um, which is solving the K-8 problem by moving a current population out and doing something else with them. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think that concept is essentially still before us, um, and we need, to, uh, we need to push on it some more. All right. Are we ready to? Well, I just I wanted to add that um, I'm kind of in Michael's camp or his original camp in, in the sense that um, we have signed a lease uh, for a number of uh, pre-K classrooms, and uh, uh, and the lease, uh, the initial lease, uh, is for five years, um, and so it's going to uh, it's going to make it more complicated to try and put something together, and I'm not sure how much uh, 
how much we're going to be able to uh, resolve with, with that uh, part of our pre-K already done. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not confident that uh, if we put a lot of effort into it, we would be able to come to a conclusion that would uh, in any way near uh, uh, remove a number of uh, K classrooms uh, combined with pre-K. Well, I think the uncertainty or the question mark here is no site identified or sites. Oh, well, sites, financing. Mm -hmm. Right, Lots all of the above. A lot of unknowns. All right. I think then we're back to, or the, is this something we want to explore further, or do we want to eliminate it from further con consideration? That's really the question before us. Is there any possibility we would get enough information to make a decision in a week on this? No. Personally, I don't think so. That's Will I, we have I'm enough information to do two seven through twelves in a week? I mean, if we're leaving one on, I mean, I'm kind of buying Rebecca's argument. If you got both of them on and we don't know about either one of them, we might as well at least ask the question. Well, it's a question, it's a matter of um, probability. Uh, if the probable answer is that, well, we've got leases and we have some questions about the um, structure of, uh, I, uh, the probability of being able to come to a conclusion that makes us say, yeah, this is what we'd like to do in a relatively short period of time uh, in order to give the school committee some uh, concrete advice as opposed to just giving them a list of 20 things or even five things, it just doesn't seem to me like that's going to happen. Well, I think, the report, I think the report can very easily have one recommendation, have a, and a series of also RANs, you know, like, like strongly, strongly recommended for, for, for yeah. the studies. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Further thought? Okay, yeah. and, all right. And then, uh, and a list of things that don't waste your time with, too. So I yeah. think it's valuable to leave this on the, on the table just for that, that purpose. Then, um, we, just going through the bullet list, there, there, I'm going to suggest that we take off the one that says remove either youngest or oldest because we've already discussed mm -hmm. uh, continuing with 7 through 12 and leave on early childhood centers as a question mark possibility. Is that reasonable? Okay. All right, so after much consideration. We have eliminated concept school. We have retained early childhood centers for further discussion. We have retained further discussion on two 7 through 12 high schools, one expanded 9 through 12 high school. And we didn't really discuss, although I believe we have some support for um, expansion at several K through eights plus the high school. Do we want to discuss that or do we just want to say we're going to leave it on for uh, further discussion? Um, gosh. We don't really need to yeah, talk about yeah, that one anymore, yeah, do I'm we? I'm kind of running out of steam. Okay, yes, fine. Then let's keep that one on. All right, so uh, just to um, recap, expand at some K through eights plus the high school. A single high school expanded, two 7 through 12 high schools, uh, early education centers. Those would be? Those uh, expand some K to 8 and then the expanded high school. That's kind of one. Well, all right. So maybe we say expand K through 8. Well, but yeah, I think there was a, they're not mutually exclusive. But, but within the high school, there's a bunch of options. Okay, so let's not limit ourselves to expanding on the campus. Let's just talk about expand the high school. So, for, for example, uh, you know, uh, you know Link, Old Lincoln could be a part of the high school solution. All right, so, so then I think we could say expand at some K through 8s, expand a 9 through 12 high school, right, two 7 through 12s, and early ed centers. Okay. All right. Is that so the final four. I think it is. Okay. And then at some point we do need to get back to site. Yep. Um, and 
Um, the interesting question about the 7 through 12 is if Lars Anderson is absolutely a non-starter, then that's off the table. I don't know that we, uh, we may feel, a majority of this committee may feel like it's a non-starter. I don't know that that's a decision that we ought to take on ourselves. I'm not sure that Baldwin isn't a possibility for it. I mean, we heard it from HMFH last week. They, yep. they had second high school concepts yep, that, they did. Yep. that involved Baldwin. Right. I, I, will re I will say one thing. I do remember about Baldwin, um, when we talked about it as uh, Article 97, it had some swap potential. Yeah. So yeah, it may be, yeah. yeah, it may be that there, that that has, um, a possibility as a site. And I want to go to the high school. If the high school expansion includes the possibility of Old Lincoln, we had talked to Dr. Lupini a bit about whether that would in fact work, whether the distance was too great in terms of scheduling and so forth. So I'd like to hear about that. Yeah, well, he talked about that for those um, professional um, programs that can be scheduled as, as a portion of the day, in other words, a block of um, periods at one site compared to the main campus and actually persuaded me that it was a doable thing. Okay, I, I must have missed that one because I thought he was going to get back to us on sort of a broader than just well, those Well, he may pieces. get back to us, but he did than, say than that. just those pieces, so. Yeah. Um, now. We're back to the uh, sticky question of whether or not Old Lincoln stays on the list for consideration for a new K through eight. Well, interestingly enough, we don't have a ninth K through eight on the list of the final four. Yep. <laughs> um, which is not a surprise, uh, to me at least, not a surprise. So. Uh, I think that tells us something about whether we're whether we're willing to at least. Sounds to me like you can to take it off take the it off. Yeah. list for consideration. Well, Anybody want to argue with that? I, I, Michael, I didn't follow that. Uh, you're saying that it wasn't in the those we're, bullet points at the end there. It's yeah. not for further uh, consideration. I mean, I, I for one did not think that that was the exhaustive list. That if it wasn't on, if it wasn't a bullet point there, it wasn't. Well, then you better propose that we put it down as a bullet point. Okay, well, you a, want a new K through eight as a bullet point. It's still a possibility, yes. All right, then we're going to have to get your colleagues to agree that that's a good idea before okay. we keep it as a bullet point. Anybody want to discuss that? Uh, just to say from a, uh, from a, a cost point of view and uh, from a locational point of view, I, I think it's um, – very unlikely well, it's, to it's be attractive. Cheaper, it's potentially cheaper than the, than the three plus one alternative, isn't it? Um, I don't know because we haven't we it, haven't honed it seems in on if we do it right. It is. Um, <laughs> HMFH said it was last week. If we did, I'm, I'm not also, advocating it for our folks, but it's like yeah. it's, just to pretend it's not there. I think is 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 wrong because. We've been talking about it for for a long time, and, and nobody's told me what. I would not. like to have the three plus high school discussion yeah. first. That, that, that's, I think I that think was that's correct, and then come back to it. All right, but not tonight. Right? Yeah, I'm kind of. So I don't think we're going to go, go any. So better. if the, if that goes on, if the, a new K through eight, which effectively means at Old Lincoln goes on the list as a fifth bullet, it goes on the list as a new K through eight if expansion, if the three if, plus high school option is well, not feasible. If, if any of those options aren't feasible, yeah. if you ask me. Right, well, well, that one in particular. Yeah. yeah. Well, but there's a difference. If one is if we could select it, it is definitely, as Rebecca said, it's going to be a default if we don't pass it on the line. All right. But, but let's, let's go back around just quickly. If we do 2, 7 through 12s, a new K through 8 is not going to be on the list. That's right. correct. Right. All right. So there are. So if we want to preserve the K to 8 model, the K to 8 neighborhood model. It's either going to be expansion or a new K through 8. Right. So if expand, if, 
if the if the expansion of the three schools is not feasible and we want to keep the neighborhood model, Old Lincoln is the only option. No, a new high school is, a, is also an option. Now, wait a second, minute. The 7 uh, through no, no. 12 is an option. No, 7 no, through 12. No, but not if we want to keep the K to 8 model. Keep the K through 8. Right. Let's, right. Be, let's right. be very clear. There's a difference between the K to 8 model and the neighborhood model. If we did two 7 to 12s, we would still have neighborhood. the neighborhood model for pre-K through sixth grade. Correct. No one would be redistricted. They would all go to the same schools they, all, they come here to go to, um, and, uh, and they would go through sixth grade. Um, so that is, in fact, retaining our neighborhood model, just limiting it to sixth, sixth grade, grade instead of taking it all the way to eight. So two different things. One is maintaining K to eight. The other one is maintaining neighborhood schools. I agree with that. <laughs> All right, now, having, having clarified things, let's go back <laughs> to be. the question of whether or not Old Lincoln would be retained as a possible site for a new K-8 through school. Well, if a new K-8 through school is on the list, it has to be retained because it's the only, so it's the only solution. Then I think, since we had a tie vote, this is one where we're going to have to, because th that we, we didn't come to a decision. Um, we need to reconsider the question of whether or not Old Lincoln School is maintained as a site. If all others fail, if you want to put it that way, or well, that's, with that's some kind other of the way I, that is the I tried to put it that way actually. All right, that's you want to do it now? Um, that uh, move that um, Old Lincoln be uh, considered as a site only if there are no other options. <laughs> basically is, is what we're left with. I'll agree. I mean, that's what we're saying. I, I think agree. everybody, it's very hard to disagree with that. I agree you, with that. You know, it's at the bottom of the list, but it's on the list. Well, there were, there were things below it on the list that aren't on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah okay. it's moved that's why I, the said, of the I said this two hours ago. It's, right. it's right. the best right. of the worst. It's, it's the know? best of the worst or the worst okay. of the best. One of the All right, other. so the, let's, let's try this <laughs> as we'll two separate midget. motions. We might revisit removing Baldwin and then accept your motion Why that we consider. Pardon me? For oh, a new K oh, through oh, 8. That's a okay. vote that we postponed. We okay. postponed gotcha. a new K. It, this is about new K through 8s. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So I think e we, we've got to eliminate something or yeah. not. Remove I don't know. Baldwin. We don't have to. Absolutely. Um, let's move. Let's, re let's remove. Let's do it. We did. We so they could have two votes. Yeah. One would be to remove Baldwin as a K through eight. We did right. that. Actually, we Actually, didn't. Actually, we didn't. We tied we did and we did not. We resolve. tied and we didn't it go further. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Majority, sorry, right? sorry. Now failed. we're reframing it, it as an affirmative. Got it. Okay. All right. All right. So if we want to do this, we have to reconsider that vote and take a second vote on holding it as a site if all other options fail. All right. So. Uh, let's be clear. Um, someone moved to reconsider the motion to eliminate Baldwin. All in favor of motion to reconsider, please say aye. Aye. Actually, we eliminated Baldwin. Before. Now, we, did not. we didn't. Technical. It we failed did. for just, lack we of majority. That vote. Go on. We, we, it failed. That, that vote failed. It was Lincoln right. that failed. I know, but no, 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 no. we it, didn't go back and revote right. again. We, we, I thought it was we, the amendment failed, and we never went further. We didn't go back, so we well, now that, have to vote it. Okay. Does you need a new motion here? Can we uh, try it again? Yeah, yeah sure. All right. We moved that the B-Space Committee removes from consideration as a site for a new K-8 through eight school, the Baldwin site. Okay, right. Based Very on the findings of the K-8 right. through eight subcommittee, if you right. like. If okay. You okay, all right. So moved. Right. It's been seconded. Second. Right. That's right. All in favor, please raise your hand. All right. Sorry. All right, we did it. Now, the second motion is, Mike, you want to do that one again? Okay. Um, so um, we consider uh, uh, that consider as an option for further discussion toward recommendations a new K through eight as Old Lincoln School solely as um, solely in, 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 uh, uh, if all other options prove not to be feasible. Okay. And that puts it formally at the very bottom of the priority list. Priority list. Right. I like that. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. 
Anybody abstain? Anybody vote no? All right. I think we did it. <laughs> you're, you're looking bemused or abused. Not very bemused. Welcome to our world. Yes, right. Transparency, it's called. If you think this is transparent, God help us. I was, by the way, I was complimented on the transparency by <laughs> my new neighbor who just moved here from JP with her three years of going to Pierce. <laughs> she said, I have read everything on the B-Space website, and you're doing a fabulous job of being transparent. Right. You mean the mayor of Boston doesn't do that? Yeah. <laughs> how, about, how about what we do is a very murky version of transparency? <laughs> So, I wonder if I, uh, on that note, I wonder, uh, in, ta in talking about doing a fabulous job, uh, <laughs> I wonder if I could remind the committee that we're getting further and further behind our deadline. Uh, yes, but we may not have that deadline anymore, and we need to have a uh, consideration of what the real deadline is, because we need to get Ex some feedback. Explain that, please. Yeah. The deadline may be the patience of the committee in continuing the discussions um, at some point. The, I mean, never mind the patience the, of all the, the people who have been we, we've, in we've been given a factories. set of different <laughs> deadlines from the outside. Um, when MSBA said that they wanted to hear what our plans were. But in order to be careful about how we proceed, it would probably be worthwhile giving them an update based on tonight's discussion. Okay. And then see if they will give us a new deadline, which might be more time. That would be my hope. Great, great. All right, because I think we're working against an impossible deadline. And I think if they saw how murky our transparency was, they might agree with me. But I, I, I hate to say this, but I think we need to also contemplate uh, the possibility that they won't give us a new deadline. That is true. In and, which case, what are uh, we going to do? I think we'll we have to plan week. for that. I think we have to plan for that because All right. uh, we can't not give the school committee an opportunity uh, to consider our report and decide what they want to do. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, there's a whole cascading effect. Is the school yeah. the school committee has to decide? You have to let MSBA know there's going to be an override study committee. They have to have a proposal in front of them right. yep. with numbers. Otherwise, uh, it's very right. difficult for them to that's, do their job. That's that's I mean, I the think conundrum. We, I think we could conceivably, if we had to, bring this next week to a recommendation, uh, a first alternative, and a series of also rands and a report on what's what's if, been eliminated. Okay. If uh, if you're prepared, if you're prepared to do that. Uh, despite how long it so, takes. So, so you know, right. to me, the question is, the question is what, what more information can we get on the 7th to 12th? Yeah, lots, I hope. Yeah, but I think we can get some more information. On, yeah. Because I think we, you know, we have a high level <coughs> picture of what the three plus would look like. We, we don't know exactly what it would look like. But I, we, we have a direction. I think, yeah. we, I think we need dollars on the three plus. Yeah, you, you, well, uh, that is another issue. We've got, and I can share with the committee um, between now and our next meeting, um, based on the numbers that HMF, HMFH provided, a sort of set of comparative figures. I think they are all going to be subject to much, much more um, review. But if you use their per square foot for new construction and their unit cost for modulars, we can package a set of numbers that I would not consider to be valid other than for comparative purposes. Right. But you can say on a scale, this one's bigger, this one's smaller, right. and I well, think we could do that. Well, they're going to be as valid as the 712. Maybe. Numbers. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, but, right. I, but in any event, uh, Madam Chairman, and you tell me if I'm incorrect, because I haven't studied the numbers as you have. All uh, I did was total it. I understand. <laughs> uh, but uh, is it fair to say that the, uh, first of all, that uh, we're unsure, and that's why we, one of the reasons we want to consult with the MSBA, we're unsure whether they would accept the 7 uh, to 12 uh, option because it changes the K through 8 yeah. option, so that's one that's critical certainly thing we an need issue. to find yeah. out. But in the event uh, that they were that flexible, that that option is probably somewhere, and 
absolutely tell me if I'm wrong, somewhere between 70 and $100 million less expensive uh, than uh, a possible uh, three plus one. No, that's Actually, that's no, the, that's no. absolutely no. not the case. No way. Absolutely not the case. Okay. No, way. no I mean, in addition to the fact that you've got to build a fairly large building to accommodate 1,200 students somewhere, you also have some reconfiguration at all eight. Right. Right. Of there's the there's a whole rates. huge um, undertaking that I, we have not yeah. even discussed. Yeah, I, I, okay. I think you'll find, basically, you're going to build X square feet of classroom at the elementary level and at X number of square feet at the high school level, both of which are going to accommodate in due course 600 students. Doesn't matter a heck of a lot where you put them or how you cluster them, they're going to cost within 20%. And you say, 20% is a lot of money. 20% is not, <laughs> it's probably less than that, but it's going to be so close that you won't make a decision based on the cost. Right. Well, without I, I, arguing I, that uh, yeah. it's, it's worth it's worth. Uh, you have to put the numbers together to that. prove the point. Right. But, uh, that's but that's what, my What do that's we my need sense. to know, <laughs> what, what else do we need to know in terms of how practical the three plus high school option is? Well, the three things, the, the equity, issue analysis, the percentage of, of, uh, of uh, students that need to be redistricted, and something, some dollars to... But, but how about the whole notion of managing well, that's those what projects? Well, exactly. that. There's a couple of things. First of all, you know, we have to look practically at how we're going to manage it, how we're going to sequence it, and don't forget we're hopefully doing the devotion school at the same time. Um, and then the other thing is I want to make sure that less than you know, a permanent solution, talk about some modular approaches at one or more of the schools. Uh, how is that going to affect the uh, common spaces? Because I know that's been identified as a major concern. You still have to, if you add a classroom, you add students, you, st it's, you add students really is the issue. If you add students, you have to change the, you have to increase the amount of common space according to a formula. Not currently. Not the modular with the current approach modules. does not address the common spaces. So right. but, Heath, Heath, but Heath can can accommodate it, is what we heard. You could use modulars at Heath, but you still have to make changes in Heath. Or you may not. Heath, no, no, sorry, right. Heath, not right. Heath, yeah. Heath could accommodate the modulars yeah. without without too too bad an effect on right. on the common space. Yeah. Lawrence is is much more of a problem there. But. Yeah. Now Lawrence, really, you rebuilt the school. Yeah. Is is there some way, Mel, I'm asking you this, you might have more insight. Is there some way we can get some better insight into whether the town and how the town could manage five substantial construction projects concurrently and how much disruption it will be sort of town wide on several levels? I mean, is there is there some way we can get some something that, other that than would be the boy, that's gonna be hard, pardon? That would be the opinion of the building commission and we have George Cole on yeah. Yeah. George, for that who's reason. not here tonight, is yeah, a member. But, but it, well, and your school committee you member do that. also. You wouldn't do that. That's why I was asking about, well, for a couple of years, yeah. could you absorb the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you absorb some, some of the, uh, the, the uh, children by enlarging the number of children in the classroom? Because what you would do is devotion and a relatively easy one, perhaps, and then the um, Lawrence and Driscoll together, and then the high school after that, otherwise right. you go right. berserk trying to manage it all. So then the question is, does that, even with uh, uh, sort of temporary uh, overcrowding of classrooms as it were, does that work? Does that timeline work? Because there's a long time lead. Uh, you know, some of these projects were two years for the schools. Yeah, it's. Um, and uh, planning time. Right. And it's, it's, and it's four, we've been told it's four years from the time you decide right. to the time you cut the ribbon and, and right. go into the building. That's true for a major renovation. It's true for right. a brand right. new school. Right. Yeah. So if you yeah. delay Lawrence by two years in order to get something done elsewhere, then it's six years out instead of four years out. Right, which makes that, at least on that basis alone, less desirable because it's going to push our crowded schools six years into the future instead of four or eight years instead of four. 
That, that's the kind of. That's correct. And George, you're right. That's, that's correct. But not here. I, I forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've said it a lot, a number of times, and Neil said earlier tonight, we're making a decision that is a 50-year decision. We're not making a decision right. for, I understand. That's for a particular cohort. What but I if you could argue that for can me. say sure. is that informally, the um, I've sort of floated that question with members of the building commission. And their argument has been that under the right circumstances, yes, we could manage multiple projects, maybe not five, but three for sure, uh, depending on their scale. Um, and I think we'd all have to hunker down and know that we were going to suffer. It, it would not be pleasant. Yeah, it would be very difficult. Can I ask you another? Know, we did the, uh, just, me, so we did the uh, heat together, right. and uh, it was tough. But, yeah. uh, Absolutely, yeah. right. And we need to get all the utility people off the streets first. Uh, off the subject, are we continuing with the choices by alternatives method, or are we going to let that uh, I fade into the sunset? I think what we may do, um, Cynthia Tao actually sent me a suggestion about things we could follow up with, and um, if we meet next week, um, maybe it's something we can talk about. But I don't believe that it really lends itself, in, and she agrees, when you lack so much information, uh, we wind up coming up with somewhat artificial results. And so where we, where we can't um, fill it, where we had all those needs more information um, categories, it just makes it um, not at this level as helpful, I think, as it was in the beginning to give us a way of talking about things with a common language and using criteria. Where it I, think did it was, help. I think it was valuable in what it Absolutely. did. Absolutely. Right. It helped but us I with the factors and the criteria. Yeah. Unless we're getting an extension, yeah. I think, I think that, we don't I have think time. It's more productive to, yeah. to just. Well, the other thing is we have pretty much a rank ordering here. Anyway, you put Low Lincoln at the bottom. I think that feasib if, if it's feasible, the, the three plus high school rises to the top, and the others or are the in the middle. Pardon? Or near well, my the top. Top. Okay. For people who my want top. two high schools, that's not and the, the case. Well, or, yeah, or two high schools, those two. Right, you know, those, yeah, the, yeah. the three plus or the yeah. seven to 12, well, the seven in to my 12, mind, yeah. are, yeah. The, are, the, right. are the two, are the two uh, leaders. Give equal, equal opportunity, okay? Uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So um, I, then I'm I, gonna I, over I, my I, I'm going <laughs> to um, <laughs> hand back so. over to Alan, uh, but I'm assuming we do have a meeting next Monday night. I think it's clear we do. Agenda to be determined. And, and I think that um, we need to prepare uh, at that meeting to make whatever, uh, to establish whatever recommendations we want to make. And, and then we have to get a report written, which is going to be complicated. Okay. <laughs> I, do. I think we need to have some more discussions to figure out how we can properly uh, give them um, a kind of briefing on the results of tonight's think, meeting? Mel, I think that we would, uh, we need to have advice from you and Peter and Bill about that. Yeah, okay. I think we're going to have to meet this week about that. Okay. We have, do we have a, uh, is Peter Rose still here? No, he left. But he was supposed to leave a uh, letter for us to sign, was he not? Ooh. Betsy? Uh, all right, we'll go look. We all right, I think we have uh, ended the meeting. Okay. We're adjourning. Right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.